2018 Lexus of Blackburn Women's Herald Sun Tour set the benchmark high. As the world's number one ranked rider, Annemiek van Vluten had to settle for second place when Brody Chapman stole the show with a career-defining performance. In 2019, Lucy Kennedy announced her arrival on the world stage. Across two gruelling stages, the search is on for the 2020 winner. Day one on the roads of Shepparton favours the sprinters. But the second stage is brutal, finishing atop a 30-kilometre ascent to the ski resort of Falls Creek. There'll be no luck in winning. On a course this tough, the strongest will shine through. Kennedy is back to defend her title with a world-class peloton out to take her throne. Who will join the honour roll this year? Hello and welcome to the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour. Matthew Keenan with you, joined by Commonwealth Games gold medalist from 2010, Rochelle de Gilmore. Rochelle, 75 riders on the start line. It is an international field. And for Lucy Kennedy, this was an early defining moment of her career when she won last year, ahead of the likes of Amanda Spratt. Different scenario this year as she comes wearing number one, which creates a huge target. Yeah, Matt, she seems to be thriving on the pressure because she's been very open on uh, social media that she really wants to win this uh, Herald Sun Tour. She's been motivated. She's got a small team. She hasn't been faced by the fact that they've lost a few to that nasty crash to down under. But uh, you can see relaxed on the start line, but very ambitious to take another tour. Well, they're just about ready to roll out, and they're starting and finishing in Shepparton. Shepparton is just a two-hour drive to the north of Melbourne and it is a beautiful part of the world and it's just around about 40 or 45 kilometres away from Ngambi. Ngambi it has its brewery, its distillery and it's also the home of Mitchelton Winery and this stage is also supported by the Mitchelton Winery. In addition to that, it's the home of Black Caviar and plenty of other racehorses including Americaine, a winner of the Melbourne Cup. It has its lake, which also has a caravan park alongside it with plenty of Jayco caravans in there and a lovely spot to take a run around. Speaking of running, Lucy Kennedy, she came from a running background before making the transition across to cycling. Running's loss is cycling's gain. Absolutely. I remember when she was coming through domestic teams and showing a lot of talent, a little bit of a late comer to the sport, but uh, she's just picked it up and seeing her race at the Strata Bianchi a couple of years ago right in the mix and I thought, wow, she's really picked it up pretty quickly and uh, she really gets amongst it. So big target of hers here. This is the quarter meant the real estate team, the sign on as well with the LABTC team. They're always easy to spot. They're the brightest team out there. The Veris team, one of the local squads, an opportunity for them to show themselves against the World Tour teams. Sarah Gigante, she'll be a marked rider, particularly tomorrow to Falls Creek. She's one of the ones that will be watching very closely as a potential overall winner. This is Lucy Kennedy signing on. Yep, clear favourite for the tour here. Uh, today she'll just have to stay out of trouble. Generally the climbers are not so confident in fast-paced sprint kind of stages, but she's, uh, she knows she's got to stay out of trouble today. She'll have a couple of teammates staying around her. And uh, the finish, she might be alone because they're obviously going to go for the win. They've got Gracie Elvin and Sarah Roy, two very fast finishers. Lucy is the big favourite, but she's not the only one. Let's take a look at the top contenders. No, I'm very excited. Um, yeah, so it's been a solid summer of cycling so far. Um, it's awesome to race with the Quarter Mentha um, Cycling Australia national team. We've got a cool group of girls and we're really looking forward to racing Herald Sun Tour. It's hot conditions, which I like, and it's a pretty flat course, which is good. I do like short climbs, so it would be cool if it was a little bit more interesting with the wind or the hills, but yeah, it should, it's looking like it could be a bunch finish, so hopefully my sprint's still going well. Yeah, I'm really excited. I think both days will make for really cool racing. Today we have 95k is just it's very flat um the wind hasn't picked up yet but i think there will be some fast and exciting racing and then tomorrow we go down and then up falls creek so i'm really looking forward to that it's uh cool to be back with number one on the jersey today's not really a stage for me so it's about staying safe and then um tomorrow will be the gc battle well, it may not be a stage for her tomorrow certainly will be let's now take a look at the course for the lexus of blackburn herald sun tour Stage one, it starts and finishes in Shepparton. It's 95 kilometres. Stage two, that is the crucial stage. It starts and finishes at Falls Creek. It's a little over 70 kilometres that stage. The final 26 k's, 
Well, that's all uphill. That will decide who takes the yellow jersey. Today's stage at 94 kilometres in total, works its way around Shepparton and surrounds. It goes out through Maroubna. It's a day where if it was windy, it could be an opportunity for the non-climbers to take some time away from those that love the high mountains. Intermediate sprints, an opportunity for those looking for the Bright Brewery points classification, or perhaps some favourites for yellow to collect a small time bonus and see if they can get themselves in front of the likes of Lucy Kennedy or Sarah Gigante. The altitude gain throughout today's stage, it oversells it a little bit, this map. It's not much climbing at all. In fact, there are no King of the Mountains points on offer. One of the favourites for today's stage is Matilda Reynolds, and we caught up with her before the stage got underway. Here's Matilda and her tactics for the day. Talking Tactics Stage 1, Shepparton to Shepparton, we're at the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour. Uh, so the, today, really with it being such a flat stage, there is likely going to be a breakaway and uh, it's really important that we're represented in that, but really as a team uh, we're going to be hoping it comes down to a bunch finish at the end. It's really, we just saw then in the men's race, really, really wide open roads. We're going to have to really keep, up, um, keep patient and hopefully lead it out into that last corner with one or two ahead and then hopefully it's first across the line. Well, Rochelle Matilda's not a big favourite, but she was third on the first stage at the Tour Down Under. She can win. She's second tier favourite, probably, but she definitely can win. Yeah, I was surprised to hear her say that the team want to bring it down to a sprint today. I mean, that's likely what's going to happen, and maybe it's just a bit of realisation. But uh, I would have thought with her strengths from a small breakaway, then you'd put your cards on her and say, OK, she's one of the favourites. But um, for the big sprinters that are here, I think it's going to be tough for her. She's always going to be amongst it so let's see what happens well they've just rolled out from the start line in Shepparton they've started from the finish line from the men's race which is also the finish line for the women's race roll out nice and calm at the very beginning they then make the turn to get out of the finishing straight on Wellsford Street and then the flag comes in to get the racing started 75 riders on the start line there's also the best young riders classification which is up for grabs which is the visit Victoria white jersey and John Trevorrow is the race director, a man who won the Herald Sun Tour on no less than three occasions. Red flag still out. They haven't started racing just as yet. There's been a bike change for number one, Lucy Kennelly. So she's had a mechanical problem right at the very start, hence the slight delay in that red flag coming in. We saw this in the men's race as well. Michael Storer had a front wheel puncher, so they waited for him to rejoin the race before it got underway. That delay only made it more aggressive once it did get started. Well, yeah, with the uh, the neutral today was scheduled for 1.2 kilometres, but they're just uh, keeping the red flag out a little bit longer due to that uh, mechanical. That will have to play on the mind of Lucy Kennedy. Be interesting to see if she actually switches back to her original bike or stays on that one for the rest of the the race. But John Trevorrow there just keeping the uh, the riders at bay at the moment before he drops that uh, flag and we can imagine it will be a, a quite aggressive race. It's going to be a very hard race for a breakaway to go because all the sprinters want to be there and uh, we tend to see in women's racing they get a little bit more nervous about that breakaway going away so it'll be interesting to see if some riders can get together and uh, it's about the makeup of that breakaway, how well they can work together. I'm anticipating that we'll see riders from Sydney Uni Staminade, Veris Racing, Step Forward Suzuki looking for that early breakaway to try and get in the move and get themselves off the front. Now at the back of the peloton, number 121, that's Bree Vine from Step Forward IT Suzuki. She's a pretty good climber, Bree Vine. She'll be looking forward to tomorrow. Thumbs up from John Trevorrow. Are we ready to go? He's a man with so many nicknames. The flag goes in, but he's just simply the race director today. When he was racing, his nickname was the Angry Ants. And then later on, it became iffy. If yep. only it came true. <laughs> That's uh, exactly what I know iffy as. Um, iffy will, iffy won't, iffy maybe tomorrow. So uh, John Trevorrow, he's got a lot of respect. He's been around the cycling world for longer than I've been here, that's for sure. A lot of experience in uh, many different areas of cycling, but a huge supporter of women's cycling. So he's uh, very excited about today's race. I just caught him uh, having a little bit of a rest before the start but um, he's excited about what might uh, happen out there today and he's very well connected with all of the athletes as well so 
The race is now underway, so not a very aggressive start. It looks like they might have a little bit of wind in the face. As we said, there's not much wind out there, but uh, you can see they're labouring a little bit already on the front there. The New Zealand national colours coming to the front, the all black colours, great colours for winter, not so good for the middle of summer. And Rochelle in Shepparton, it's warm. OK if you're by the pool, a little taxing if you're out on the bike. I think the Europeans, are, I'm certainly feeling it today, Matt. Uh, we've had a, a, since Christmas, we've had a, a pretty, uh, I think, I've been in Sydney. Adelaide wasn't as hot as it's usually been. And uh, today down here, it's extremely hot. So there's advantages of the women being the main event today in the afternoon. Um, it's not often that they get to follow the show of the men. And uh, one of the disadvantages today is that it's extremely hot at this time of day. They did this at the Road National Championships in Ballarat as well for the Criterium. They had the women as the last event in the Criterium. And in the past, it's always been that the women's race has been the curtain raiser. I like that the women went last. And the women's race was outstanding. And it was taken out in a photo finish by Chloe Hosking, who just got the better of one of the favourites for today's race, Ruby Roseman Gannon. Have you had a chance to see her race much throughout this summer? Yeah, absolutely. A, um, a real star of the future, Ruby Rose Gannon. So we'll be watching her for the sprint today for sure. She'll be uh, in the mix. But uh, what a disappointment that Chloe Hosking is not here today. Her team, unfortunately, crashed out at the Tour Down Under. They simply didn't have enough riders to be on the start line. So a little bit disappointing not to see... Chloe here, no doubt she would love this stage and be up there in the mix, but uh, Ruby Rose Gannon, she's definitely one to look out for at the finish. She can upset some of the international favourites. Alina Sierra is here, the Cuban national champion, riding for Astana. She was the winner last year of the uh, Deakin University Kid 11's Great Ocean Road Race, and she finished in second place on the weekend just behind the breakaway as it was Leanna Lippert who took the win. So surely we have to put Sierra down as the one to beat. Yeah, look, I'd say she's the outright right favourite, um, probably with the fastest legs in uh, this peloton at the moment. So Elena Sierra, the Cuban, definitely, I mean, to, to back up this year at uh, the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race in second place after a win was fantastic. So she's in good form. So we'll watch out for her at the finish and uh, some other big names that we've got in there. Peter Mullins, she's always one that's there around the mark. She's pretty handy in a sprint, so she'll be up there in the top five. We've heard from Matilda Reynolds. She'll be there. She fancies her chances at the finish. Peter Mullins, I'm almost more surprised when she's outside the top five than when she wins. Yeah, absolutely. In any event. Yeah, very So true, consistent. Matt. Yeah. Peter Mullins is definitely a rider you can put a lot of money on for a top five. What here. about number 21, Lauren Stevens, the American from Tipco? Yeah. Another one that's always there, Matt. Um, we can definitely count on her being there in the top five at the finish. Lauren Stevens, number 21, just chilling out at the back there, but got a nice little turn of speed on her. And, um, of course, the Mitchelton Scott team have got a couple of cards to play as well. They've got Sarah Roy, Gracie Elvin coming into great form at the moment as well. They've got a new rider from the UK, British rider Jess Roberts, who has a huge future ahead of her. I don't know if she'll be uh, captain on the road or the team sprinter today, but uh, if she does have a chance, I, I'd say that she'd be up there as well. She might be used as a lead-out rider today for Gracie Elvin or Sarah Roy. Lucy Num Kennedy will be Number good. 86 going around the outside. That is Madeline Wright. She was in the day-long breakaway on Saturday at the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race. And she's not too far away from home. She comes from Aubrey Wodonga. She's a physiotherapist by trade. She works full time and she's still racing against the very best in the world. Yeah, it's phenomenal uh, how, how athletes can do that. As we say, uh, the training's one thing, but uh, where the gains are made is mostly in the recovery. So when you're trying to hold down a job, uh, I admire these, uh, these riders. And I think it is possible to do a certain amount of racing, but um, if you were trying to do it week after week, trying to back up, doing tours and things like that, longer tours, it could get a bit demanding, but uh, I think we can see good performances and a two-day tour like we have here at the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour, two days, so a flat day today and a very, very demanding day tomorrow. This is the Agoloco team moving around the outside, en masse, all of them moving up towards the front together. Just briefly back to the Mitchelton Scott team and trying to work out who should be the number one rider for them today. Clearly it's Lucy Kennedy tomorrow for the mountaintop finish at Falls Creek. Normally looking at that start list, you'd suggest Sarah Roy is their best prospect for the sprint finish. 
but she's on her way back from injury. She had to have surgery with the issue that she had with her leg, with the uh, issue with her leg going dead effectively and not getting any blood flow through to her leg. So perhaps she's not the protected rider today. Yeah, it's a hard one to call. They'll most certainly have a plan. They might, <coughs> excuse me. They might even leave it to um, you know halfway through today's stage to make a call on it. You How never you know with these kind of things. So my guess is that they um, they do kind of have a loose plan, but I think that'll be confirmed after they get to feel how the legs are and out there after halfway through the race they um, they'll make a call amongst themselves. There's Lucy Kennelly up towards the front, Mitchelton Scott team with plenty of support riders around. And Gracie Elvin also riding towards the front. Gracie's a really quick sprinter in her own right. She could quite easily put hand, her hand up and say, why don't you work for me? And we saw earlier on this afternoon with Alberto Denisi winning the opening stage of the men's race, that battle for position is so important. And Gracie Elvin's been doing a little bit of boxing in the off season. So look out for Gracie heading into that final corner. Yeah, I think like experience does at this level, it does come into play as well. So even if uh, a younger rider might have a, a faster turn of speed on them, the uh, experience in the last five kilometres and also throughout the race, how you, um, you know, you manage your efforts and keep hydrated and, you know, what condition you actually get to the finish in. So more experienced riders might... Uh, be favoured towards the finish. This is an important race for Mitchell and Scott. We started uh, the men's race out at the winery this morning and obviously um, Mitchell and Scott very involved in in the race so it's an important race for the team. And they will be feeling the pressure. They'll always want to have a great result here. For sure. Number 82, that's Peter Mullins who you spoke about for the Rock Salt Attacker team. It's a team that's had a huge impact on the Australian Summer of Cycling. Justine Barrow collecting the silver medal in the road race at the recent National Championships. Emily Herfoss got the bronze medal in the time trial at the National Championships. Madeline Wright we've already spoken about. She was in the big breakaway on Saturday at the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race. So that's a team that what we do know, whether they get a result or not, they won't be quiet. Yeah, look, it's a, a phenomenal um, long-term relationship that uh, the director of the team, Calvin Rundle, has had with Australian Cycling. They've been so dominant over many, many years. The sponsor being um, lead name, title sponsor, changing a few times, but uh, the same organisation in invo involved. And uh, they're at uh, registered UCI team this year, so they've taken a, uh, a step up. There's 82, Peter Mullins. As we say, it'll be a surprise if she's outside of the top five. She's had a pretty solid summer. She yep. said she peaked a little bit early for the summer, but um, had some good form November, December. But uh, she is a rider that holds a pretty high level even uh, when she's not at her top. So She's so at ease on the bike with Australian titles in mountain biking, on, in track cycling, on the road in the Criterium and the road race. There's not much she can't do. No, and she's got a beautiful pedalling style as well, so very comfortable. She likes to get some big kilometres and big rides in. Not scared of hard work. So we just see now Sarah Roy moving to the front, looking for her teammates from Mitchell and Scott as Lucy Kennedy moves up to the front. They'll be wanting to keep Lucy at the front, keeping an eye out for her all day until the last final kilometres where they'll want to be going for a sprint. This is first serious attack of the day. This looks like it is the Pro Racing Sunshine Coast team trying to get off the front. The Specialised Women's Racing team also trying to get amongst it. That's the team of Matilda Reynolds. She said they were going to look to try and put somebody in the breakaway. So far, true to her word. Yeah, 86.4 kilometres to go and it's been put in the gutter. So there are riders who want to force a breakaway. And as we have listed out some of the sprinters, there are plenty of teams here without a sprinter that they would put their money on for a top three. So there will be teams trying to break this up and just hope that they can get a strong combination of riders out in front and see what happens. They've got 10 kilometres to go before they hit the first of the intermediate sprints, which is at Tulamba West. It could be all important time bonuses. Absolutely. I think the, uh, the riders who we expect to be going for the finish will want to go for this as well. Um, also the GC riders, I mean, they're going to find it quite tough on a flat stage to go for the time bonuses in the intermediate sprints, but we'll certainly see the sprinters up there testing their legs and trying to get those bonus seconds, hoping to be in the yellow jersey after today's stage. 85 kilometres remaining. This is stage one of the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour. The peloton is on their way towards the first of the intermediate sprints. 
the high country is now really renowned as the destination for cycling. Having grown up in the area, did you always have that threat of fire and were well aware of it? This summer we've had horrific bushfires and having people come back and it would be good to see the trails getting filled up and the roads getting filled up with cyclists again. You and I have had fortune ride all over the world and this matches anything I've done. Couldn't agree more. I mean, we're so spoilt with the vineyards, the mountain views, it's just magic. So the ride that we've done today, that's a road ride that I know pretty well. But you're famous for being a world champion on the mountain bike. You've got to take me off road. Yes, we've got Mystic Mountain Bike Park here and then six other amazing locations. This is one of my favourite destinations. I'm coming back in Easter. Hopefully lots of other people come back as well and support the locals. Cheers, mate. Shepparton is hosting the start and the finish of the opening stage of the Lexus of Blackburn Women's Herald Sun Tour and this is the home of the childhood of David McKenzie. Beautiful destination for a family holiday, renowned for its fabulous public pool and its motor museum. Grass tennis courts with 23 tennis courts and it hosts part of the country weekend. It's also the home of the New Year's Day track cycling carnival and it's seen some Olympic representatives come out of this town, including Sean O'Brien and also Steve Fairless. It is a cycling hotbed. Rochelle Gilmore is with me, Commonwealth Games gold medalist from 2010. Rochelle, early part of this opening stage, not much wind to speak of. So those that have been looking to try and get the breakaway going, they haven't had any luck so far. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult for them, especially because the peloton are pretty convinced that this is going to come back in the end to a, a bunch sprint and they know how hard tomorrow's stage is. So there's a lot of riders that may have just come to terms with the fact, you know, it's hot out here, it's really hot, let's just safely get through this stage, have a go at the sprint in the finish and the GC will be decided tomorrow. But uh, yeah, we'll see some riders have a go. We saw it strung out for a little bit, but uh, as we can see, just riders so importantly trying to get uh, all the liquids they can get on board at the moment 84 kilometers still to go i've spent a lot of time in shepparton with various bike races on the track of the new year's day carnival various state level road races as well i've never seen so little wind yeah it's, it's incredible very still, very still today yeah there was a, a couple of days ago it was blowing a little bit down here but uh, today super still we did see still in the men's race earlier a lot of action and I think this will heat up a little bit at the moment. Some riders just trying to sort themselves out, get their teams together, talk and communicate to each other. Number 94, this is Taryn Heather at the back. She'll be an important rider tomorrow for the Specialised Women's Racing Team where they'll be hoping that Jamie Gunning, who's the climber on that squad, can challenge for the podium in the overall classification and if not, at least race for the Visit Victoria Best Young Rider classification. But today, that team, they're focused on number 96, Matilda Reynolds. Yeah, look, you can see them all just going to the back to communicate, to have a chat. They might want to go up together, up the right-hand side, but um, very professional of them. Taryn Heather, she's been around for a long time. Matilda Reynolds is a new name, I think, uh, on the circuit here, but uh, some sensational results. And, you know, she's in the hardest races, so tomorrow she'll definitely be around and she fancies, fancies the chances for today's sprint as well so you can see that that they just went to the back to have a chat move to the right hand side of the road and they're going to push their way up to the front with their lead rider number 96 matilda reynolds and number 24 that's janelle crooks she's a rider that went missing for 12 or 18 months she stepped away from the sport for a little while after having spent her first few seasons riding with the mitchelton scott team she now gets a chance back with tipco silicon valley bank the american squad and a little bit like Ash Barty in the tennis, she stepped away at 18 years of age. She went and played cricket for a season or so, and that did her the world of good. And I'm hoping the refresh, the reboot for Janelle Crooks has a similar impact on her career. Well, look, it'll be interesting to see how she goes today because the, uh, the race doctor I was chatting with uh, earlier before the start, and it was a question mark whether she'd actually start today. She's had a pretty nasty fall in that accident at Tour Down Under, and she's got a very bruised lumpy kind of troubling hip 
So, um, you know, ultimately it's it's the rider and the director's decision. The race doctor gave the all clear, said, see how you feel. So Janelle Crook's a little bit uncomfortable on the bike today and I think just might play with her mind a little bit as well. So it'll be interesting to see if she gets stuck into the race or whether she's even thinking about pulling out of the race. Um, you just don't know with injuries like that until you get into the thicker things. So, yeah, but great to see her back and uh, she's been a, a very, very valuable domestique um, for many years as well in Europe and in Australia. So Janelle Crooks there. We'll keep an eye on her, number 24. Well, there's plenty of riders who are suffering the ill effects from crashes at both the Santos Tour Down Under and also the uh, Jake, uh, uh, the Kid Evans Great Ocean Road Race, which was on Saturday, where at 20 kilometres to go, there was a massive crash that included around about 25 or so riders. And just about the entire Mitchelton Scott team were taken down by that crash or held up by that crash. Amanda Spratt, the only one really to get through it unscathed, and she finished in third position in that race. Yeah, it was unfortunate for the Mitchells and Scott team. I mean, they were struggling to get uh, starters on the start line. So we've got teams of six here, but you need to have a minimum of four to start, and that's why Sarah Roy was called in to start today. We see her on the front there just having a chat, but uh, an unexpected call-up for her just a couple of days ago. And that's why it made me think she'll have a go on the sprint mat and she'll be good because it's one of those things we haven't specifically prepared for something. You can actually get the best out of yourself sometimes. And no pressure. No pressure. I wonder if she'll just test the legs at this first intermediate sprint, which is seven kilometres away. This is Pataro, Francesca Pataro from the Astana women's racing team. Another team impacted by Saturday's crash in the Kid 11's Great Ocean Road Race. And that's a team that starts with the bare minimum of four, but they've still got a favourite for today, Alina Sierra. Yeah, it's difficult for the European teams too because you don't want to really come out with seven riders if you're going to have one rider that unfortunately doesn't race. But uh, then if you lose a couple, you're in big trouble. It's not so easy to just get a rider to jump on a flight and uh, come out here because obviously they can get here on time maybe, but uh, it's not really healthy to start a tour the day after um, flying out from Europe. It's a, <laughs> big, it's a big flight and, yeah. it's a, and it's a big change in the climate to go from zero degrees yeah. to 30 plus degrees that can really knock the system around and then fly back and return it into zero degrees with the opening of the season not too far away in Europe it can have a huge impact yeah there's a lot of challenges for the Europeans uh, coming out here and also with the with the equipment I mean there's been so many crashes this summer that the teams have had to scramble for you know relying on domestic teams or, or bike shops, local bike shops to we'll get you know equipment shipped out as well. So there's a lot of challenges for the Europeans to be so far away. But um, as I said to somebody the other day, yeah, a little bit of sympathy for us Aussies who go over there for six to say the Europeans are getting a little bit homesick. I'm like, hey, welcome to our world. A little bit of context for them. Number 92, this is Kate Perry from Specialised Women's Racing. She's been a winner of the Tour of Bright in the past when it had a stage finish at the top of Mount Hotham. She has spent a lot of time training in Bright, particularly on Falls Creek. So she'll really be looking forward to tomorrow's stage where she'll be a key support rider for Jamie Gunning. And if Jamie doesn't fire, Kate herself will try her luck, I'm sure. She's a very good climber and a good time trial as Kate Perry. Unfortunately for Kate, there's no time trial in the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour. Yeah, certainly got a handy little team, the Specialised Women's Racing Team. Got some uh, experience and names and strength in that. But, uh, as we see now, it is the Mitchell and Scott team along with Astana there at the front, Team Sunweb as well. Or not. No, it's the uni, <laughs> Very the Sydney Uni Staminate. It looks exactly the same. Might just need to take my glasses off here. Um, talking about Sunweb, the winner of the men's race. Very exciting. Yeah. Finish there. So we'll see a similar type of sprint, no doubt, in the women's. But, uh, yeah, Sunweb did come out to Australia with uh, the women for the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race. A bit oh, of success They had a there. brilliant summer. The Santos Tour Down Under, they had second overall. Then they won Best Young Rider Points Classification, Queen of the Mountains. They then won the Deakin University Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race with the young German, the 22-year-old Leanna Lippert. And they had five riders inside the top 21. Yeah, Phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, fantastic. So uh, no doubt we'll see them back and maybe even for a longer campaign to include the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour next year for the women of Sunweb. So 
the back of the peloton here. Kiwi team there we've spoken about. Number 74, Swain of New Zealand. Just chilling out at the back So they take this right-hand turn. It's a very young team, the Kiwi team. Of the seven riders on that squad, they have four of them. Of the six riders, I should say, on that squad, they have four of them eligible for the best young rider classification. Number 92, Kate Perry. She doesn't like the jostling for position within the peloton. A day like this, she'll be hoping simply to get through without losing any time. So it's Sarah Roy at the front and the centre of the picture for Mitchelton Scott. Yeah, that gives us a little bit of an indication they might be riding for Gracie Elvin today, given that Sarah Roy is policing the front of the peloton. She's doing a... Makes sense with the injury that she's yeah. returning from, and this is her first race of the season. Pro Racing Sunshine Coast team on the left-hand side of the screen. It's the dark blue, blackish colours. I think they might be moving towards the front in the hope that Ruby Rose Mangannon can participate in the first of the intermediate sprints. Sydney Uni Staminade now at the front of the peloton on the right-hand side of the screen. Four Ks to the intermediate sprint. On the road to Rushworth at the moment. Fluoro colours off to the left. That is the LA BTC team. Back of the peloton, this is Gina Merrick from the New Zealand national team. Some sort of mechanical problem. Look, great timing coming into the intermediate sprint. Pace is going to pick up slowly here, and the sprinters will want to test their legs a little bit. It'll be interesting to see if the likes of uh, Sierra from Astana and the, the big sprint names will actually have a go. I think they would test the legs. There's a bonus seconds on offer as well. The tempo's starting to pick up. You can feel the intensity rising. They're not too far away from the first of the intermediate sprints in the race for the Bright Brewery points classification. And there's always that anticipation, Rochelle, that through the sprint, that's when the breakaway goes. Absolutely. It's a good reason to just follow wheels, even if you don't want to give a maximum effort. Um, and things can happen, you know, on different sides of the road as well. So it's good to be up there and out of trouble. Um, no doubt we'll see Lucy Kennedy trying to stay near the front out of trouble in that intermediate sprint just covering moves to after the sprint a very dangerous period of the race the peloton fanned out across the road difficult to move to the front if you are stuck at the back and number 92 the left hand side of the road that's kate perry who i spoke about not liking the jostling for position and even at the back of the peloton she's giving a lot of distance it's not the only rider that finds herself in that position one of the best in the men's peloton thomas de Gent, is exactly the same He's either at the very back, off the front in a breakaway, or on the front of the peloton, destroying the hopes of the breakaway. Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult um, thing for a, a sprinter like myself to, to comprehend because you want to, personally, I'd want to be as deep and thick in the middle of that peloton as possible to get uh, wind protection from all directions and have to put less power on the pedals every single pedal stroke just waiting for that uh, final 100 metres. Now we can see at the back of the peloton, Lucy Kennedy, the tall rider. I'm pretty sure that's her, which is a dangerous place to be with all the traffic happening. Number five, in fact, is Jessica Roberts. Oh, she's a tall rider as well. So that's yeah. the new rider from the UK, the British rider, Jess Roberts. Um, a very handy sprinter, good turn of speed. I think she'll be a super valuable domestique when they get to Europe. Um, perhaps just needs a little bit more experience in the thick of these bunches and especially European pelotons. But uh, I think we'll see her uh, very valuable rider today and tomorrow for the Mitchell and Scott team. Yeah, her role today will be keeping the rest of the team hydrated. Back to the team car collecting water bowls consistently. Well, it's great for her to have the first uh, experience with a world team here in Australia rather than in the aggression of the European bunches. So it's a, it's a nice uh, step up from British racing, which she pretty much dominated the last couple of years. So... A little bit of a step up before she gets into the European racing. So the yellow and black colours on the left, that's the Veris Racing women's team making their way up towards the front. Shuffling the decks, two kilometres to the intermediate sprint. Plenty of riders that perhaps think, I can't win the stage, but maybe I can win the intermediate sprint. Yeah, look, it'll be a fantastic opportunity for riders after the sprint to uh, try and form that breakaway. Um, because whilst they haven't been uh, attacking and strung out at the moment, it's still quite taxing with the positioning in the peloton. And this time of season, it's hard to know which wheels to follow as well, which ones are going to go backwards or forwards. Um, the styles of riders, 
the styles that each rider has and um, just learning all the new colours as well. When I see this bright colour of LA, I think of Chloe Hosking. Yes, but, uh, <laughs> she's new team. Moved, she's moved on to a new team and she's not in this race actually here. But, uh, you know, I associate those bright colours with, uh, with Chloe Hosking. So it takes a while, the early season, just to get used to all the new jerseys and colours and sponsors, names of teams and things like that. One kilometre to the sprint, Rochelle, and I'm with you with Chloe Hosking. It took a little while to adjust to the orange colours of Rally. This is the Tipco team that we see, the dark blue with the yellow helmets on the left-hand side of the screen. Chloe's old team, the LA team, they're off to the right-hand side of the road, and I anticipate that they're trying to set up the intermediate sprint for Anastasia Tresina, who was sprinting pretty well across in Adelaide a little over a week and a half ago. Could also be Anna Trevisi, handy little sprinter, um, used more often than not as a domestique, but she has got a little turn of speed on her as well, Anna Trevisi. So we've got LA Cipollini, the Tipco team, really working hard too. It'll be interesting to see if they've got Lauren Stevens, their sprinter, lined up for this one, or if they're using another rider for the intermediate sprint. So they're the two big teams pulling at the front, but will it be another rider maybe from a stunner that will jump out and take the points? So they have to be within 500 metres now of that first intermediate sprint. And it looks like it is Anna Trevisi in second position. What we do know, if it is her, she'd be vocal. She's not quiet by any stretch of the imagination. She's in trouble here, Matt. She's been left uh, too far from the finish. They've got a banner there. We haven't seen if that's a couple of hundred metres to go, but it I is a little bit too early and it's Tipco coming off the wheel. That will be 200 metres to go. And Ruby Roseman Gannon getting into the mix. Lauren Stevens up towards the front. And Ruby, Ruby Roseman Gannon collects the maximum points at the first of the intermediate sprints. Super exciting for Ruby Rose Gannon. She's to be to be amongst the top sprinters there with Tipco and LA. You know, well, teams that are really dominating in uh, world-class races in Europe. And here goes the counter-attack. No other than probably Peter Mullins. It's a rock salt rider. Let's see who it is on the attack there. It was a given that as soon as they go through the sprint, we'd see the attack. And it's no surprises that it's coming from Rock Salt Attacker. It seems like it's such an appropriately named team. It could be Emily Herfoss. One thing I've noticed, they have a very similar pedalling style, Herfoss and Peter Mullins. Two of the most beautiful pedalling styles. You've seen the women's peloton, that's for sure. So we'll pick up that number for you in a moment. But uh, this is serious business. And the wind is coming from their left, the right-hand side of the screen. Hence, they're all the way over in that, gana, that oh, gutter. That so they're not giving any other riders a sit and protection from the wind. And you saw that swinging off a second wheel. That means that the pressure is on, the pace is high. This could well be Herfoss. Let's try and pick that number up for you. And then we've got uh, a teammate of Ruby Rose Gannon, very well placed there. Matilda Reynolds is around about in fourth position. She's in the bluish colours of specialised women's racing. She's making sure that she stays up the front and out of trouble. Gracie Alvin is there for the Mitchelton Scott team. A few riders moving around the outside. The rider that you can see in the white colours, that's Charlotte Lucas. She rides for the Tipco team, but she wears the white jersey as the Oceana champion. Well, they haven't let up yet. These two riders out in front still applying the pressure. You can see riders panicking on the left side of the road, trying to get up and better their position. But it uh, looks like Mitchell and Scott have got things under control there and got it covered as well. So it's all coming back together. Will it sit up or will another rider have the legs to go over the top here? I think we're going to see a few more attacks and surely a breakaway yep. does form. Here, Here we it go. goes. This is the quarter meant the national team by the looks of it now trying to go on the attack. And they always race so well out here in Australia. Their director, Donna Ray Zielinski, is uh, one of the best with these development riders. Really knows how to uh, get them in the mix of the race and be amongst it. This is Rock Salt Attacker attacking again. No retreat, no surrender. This is such a strong, aggressive team. They've been huge contributors to the summer, and this is Emily Herfoss at the front, and she is powering. Well, they are a super strong team on paper too, Matt. They've got the firepower here to just keep attacking over the top. They want it to split up. They do have Peter Mullins, a handy little sprinter, but as we said, she's more likely to be around third to fifth place in these sprints, but she's definitely a favourite from a small breakaway, so they've got a few riders there. Justine Barrow, what a sensational ride at the National Championships. That's a name that I'll never forget. I didn't know it, I must admit, before the National Championship, but that was a, uh, a fantastic ride for the second place at the Australian National Championships. Huge performance. That's Charlotte Lucas in the white with the yellow helmet, a flick of the elbow, a look across the shoulder. What sort of damage has been done? None so far. So 
Rock Salt attack out. They want to break away. The Cordamenta Australian team, they're always well positioned too. They'd like to be in that break. And uh, we can see Mitchelton Scott are just policing things in the peloton, just trying to keep it all together. Not too uh, interested in contributing at the moment. As we know, they've got uh, small numbers here, just four riders, so they don't want to put themselves in a vulnerable position. We've had the first abandonment of the race. The Thailand national champion, Manifan, from the LA team, has abandoned the race, and that was after 14 kilometres. So she's still paying the price for having been involved in the fall on Saturday at the Deakin University Kid 11's Great Ocean Road Race. Well, interesting to see her abandon. It has been a long summer out here for the rider from Thailand. She was very active in the in the racing, both at Tour Down Under and Kid L's race. So called it a day already here at the Herald Sun Lexus of Black Blackburn tour. Let's take another look at that intermediate sprint. Oh, what? this is the abandonment. In fact, this is the crash or the abandonment at the back for number 14, Menafan. That was her deciding race is over for me. And in the process, she almost took Holly Harris with her. This is a look at the intermediate sprint. The winner of the sprint, it wasn't Ruby Roseman Gannon. It was her teammate, Alexandra Martin-Wallace, who managed to get the win. Stevens in second position. Reynolds in third place. Well, They've got the same hairstyle, same bike, same kit. That just makes their team even stronger, Matt, because uh, they've got strength in numbers. That's 93, Holly Harris just makes her way back up after that little mishap with the rider from Thailand abandoning would have given her a bit of a fright but she'll make contact with the back of the peloton now what do you make of matilda reynolds participating in that intermediate sprint given she's one of the favorites to win the stage look i think she's done the right thing especially in the first intermediate sprint just to test the legs and see where she at where she's at because if the top end speed's not there and she feels that she's uh, not really got what it takes to be amongst the finish then they know they need to change their style of racing and perhaps really force a breakaway but uh, for the moment Roxholt attacker are doing all of the attacking so come around the corner here uh, a lot of the Europeans won't know all of the Australian uh, names and the strength that they have so they that's why we might see things close down quicker than usual here because they can't leave anything or anyone to chance out there in a breakaway and that change of direction, so the wind coming from the other side, they're now moving towards the right-hand side of the screen, or the left gutter for them. The rider in the yellow colours from Veris Racing Women's Team. She swings over to the right, and everybody goes with her. 70 kilometres still left to race before they get back to Shepparton, and no breakaway has been formed yet. They've been out on course now for 25 k's. Yeah, there's been quite a few attempts, but uh, as we said, it's uh, interesting being early season, not knowing riders' form and uh, the strength of the teams and riders, everyone just still getting to know each other, then it kind of really does mean that they close things down a lot quicker and don't leave anything to chance. Everybody breathe for a moment. There's been a few attempts to try and get away. The peloton calms back down again. Number 24 at the back of the peloton. That's Janelle Crooks, who we spoke about earlier on. She had a little bit of a break from the sport. It's great to see her back. Number 93. That's Holly Harris, who went dirt side for a little while. Number 114. That's Alexandra Martin-Wallace, who won that intermediate sprint. She paid the price. I can feel the pain at the back of the peloton. She's hoping things calm down, but they won't because guess what Roxalt's doing? They're attacking. Jessica Pratt in second position from Quarter Mentha, the Australian national team. Jessica Pratt is the sort of rider that if she was to steal a little bit of time today, she's a really good climber. She got a position on the Canyon Shram team as a result of winning the prize via the Zwift Academy. She's got horsepower, and tomorrow is all about horsepower. Yeah, absolutely a rider with uh, a lot of strength and fantastic opportunity. She, she has... Uh made for herself through that SWIFT program to get onto the Kenyan Tram team. She rides along the side, the side of Tiffany Cromwell, who's already back in uh, Monaco preparing for Strada Bianchi, but uh, unfortunately she was one of the riders that came down at the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race. Almost but, more uh, that fell than didn't. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. At least caught up behind it. it. was a huge fall. She was off to the hospital, got stitches, and straight to the airport on a long flight. But that's true she's Tiffany okay. Cromwell style. Yeah, she's all right. She's landed on her elbow pretty heavily, but um, she's one of the toughest riders in the peloton, so it wouldn't phase her the slightest. She'll be back into training already, back in uh, Monaco. Excellent. Race still together inside the last 70 kilometres. Stage one of the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour. Last year, this race was taken out by Lucy Kennedy. She's returned to try and defend her title. The winner of the race two years ago, that was Brody Chapman, who this year has taken a big step up to ride with the French FDJ team. Already a big win under a belt down there. It's a race towards Tor Torquay. Um, Torquay race there, fan fantastic finish, very, very exciting and I think it's great to see Brodie Chapman settling into her new French team. Another attack off the front, this is the Pro Racing Sunshine Coast team. They've already tasted a little bit of success in this race with Alexandria Martin-Wallace collecting the first of the intermediate sprints. There's been a bit of action also at the back of the peloton, particularly for Holly Harris. And this was the moment where Menefan, the Thailand national champion, was deciding she was going to abandon the race. Holly Harris got caught underneath the wheel and then went dirt side. But now, thankfully, number 93 has returned to the peloton and having a little conversation here or some encouragement from Ella Bloor. That's what teammates are for. Number 114, that's Martin Wallace, the winner of the first of the intermediate sprints in the race for the Bright Brewery points classification. So this is the step forward team that's going off the front. This is Bree Vine who is breaking away. Their colours and Pro Racing Sunshine Coast look almost identical. Well, it's the first rider that's been able to put daylight between themselves and the peloton. So it's a hard uh, task, I think, to be out there by yourself. But she may be joined by some riders. It's great to see that uh, we finally put the peloton under a little bit of pressure here. And she's going fishing. She's got... A bit of bait on the lure. She's trying to attract others out with her. She won't want to be out here on her own for too long. She'll be hoping for some company. She'll definitely be hoping uh, someone gets across. So Brie Vine there, number 121. First look over her shoulder. So that's generally the idea. Just put the power through the pedals until you get a little bit settled. And you can see now the peloton's really breaking up. So they're under some pressure there. You can see a couple of echelons trying to make their way across. That's a big reaction. She needs to move across to the left-hand side of the screen, the right gutter, so when she gets caught by the peloton, she gets some protection from the wind. If she stays all the way over that side, the peloton will blow past and she gets no shelter. Yeah, you can see she's fighting the wind uh, from the left side, so she definitely should be over there in the gutter, but she's making it hard. She's doing it the hard way, but she's, she's making it hard for riders to come across to her wheel. So with a little bit more experience, she'd go over to the gutter, wait till she gets a couple on, and then just move over a little bit. The yellow helmets up towards the front. That's the TIPCO Silicon Valley Bank team. An American team that's been out here for the summer. Got a couple of Australians on that team. Janelle Crooks and Sarah Gigante. And there is Janelle, number 24, down towards the back of the peloton. Number 81, stretching her legs. That's Justine Barrow. The yeah. surprise performance of the national championships. 40 years of age, full-time physio, silver medal behind Amanda Spratt. Outstanding. Yeah, she said a teammate come back there to try and help her up to the front. Maybe a little bit uncomfortable in uh, the thick of the peloton. We've seen her at the back a lot, but uh, she also rides a particularly large gear. I remember watching her at the national yes. championships, thinking with a couple of laps to go, she's done. She's riding a big gear and she's moving a bit on the bike, but uh, that's just her style and she just didn't die. Yep. So well, uh, we see that again now. I just uh, got a glimpse of her at the back of the peloton. She rides a big gear, but uh, don't let that... <laughs> you know, she's just got so much power and endurance. It was amazing. She had plenty of power, and as Rowan Dennis said, she can mash for cash. Pat Shaw is out on the race. Pat, it's been a few attempts for riders to break away, but no successes yet. No, it seems like uh, the riders are all too concerned about tomorrow's stage. But let's stick with today's stage. First intermediate sprint, which you have already shown, Mar Alexander Martin was picked up the intermediate sprint there and look a young rider but she's got the potential to really have a strong finish in today's stage also ruby roseman gannon on that team and she's my favorite for today's stage ruby roseman gannon so stevens picked up an extra couple of seconds as well along the road and reynolds rounded out the top three i think they're going to be the three to watch for the finish too so um 
including Ruby Roseman Gannon in that. Um, but at this point, there's not a lot of action. We just saw Bree Vine off the front uh, trying to force the pace. But unfortunately, Matt, I think this is a great chance for opportunists, but they don't seem to be taking advantage of it. Uh, do you see any risk for some of the strong climbers, such as uh, Justine Barrow, Sarah Gigante, and also Kate Perry, sitting down towards the back of the peloton today? Well, you know my thoughts on that. I'm very much against sitting at the back of the peloton, regardless of the terrain, uh, because, well, unfortunately, we saw what happened in the men's race earlier today, and um, crashes do happen at the back of the peloton. That's where they happen uh, a lot of the time. So I'd prefer to see them move up the peloton. Uh, Justin Barrow, though, she's known for chilling at the back, um, and tomorrow's race will suit her, but we've got to remember they've got to go down Falls Creek first, Matt Keenan, and... That's going to be a skill requirement in itself. I think Samara Shepherd from the New Zealand national team is the one that we should really be watching. A keen mountain bike, a New Zealand national champion on the mountain bike. So she'll go downhill fast and she climbs uphill just as quick. So you could win this race on the way down Fools Creek? I um, don't want to say yes, but yes. <laughs> well, okay, well, let's, let's couch that slightly differently. You could lose the race going down Fools Creek. You can certainly lose the race going down Falls Creek tomorrow, but it's also very difficult to rain down the bottom. The thing we've got to be careful of is at the moment, the race isn't really an aggressive race, but at any moment it could turn that way, and we've seen gaps in the finish, particularly going into Shepparton today. A little bit technical through that final corner. There could be natural splits in that sprint, remembering for people viewing at home, if there is more than one second gap between one rider and the next, a natural time gap will occur in the sprint finish. And I think that's a real possibility today. So riders like Sarah Gigante, Justin Barrow, they'll really need to make sure they're right up the front so they don't lose those crucial seconds. Thanks, Pat. We'll keep checking in with you throughout the race. Let's now hear from last year's winner, Lucy Kennedy. This year, it's, I believe it's the first race that I've come to as defending champion and um, being able to pin number one on my jersey is pretty cool. We've been here at Mitchelton Wines for the last couple of days since the Cadell Evans race. Uh, absolutely enjoying it. It's the first time I've had the pleasure of staying here. Uh, so we've been enjoying these beautiful surroundings and eating some lovely local food and just generally relaxing. The accommodation here at Mitchelton Wines has been outstanding. Uh, for a race hotel, um, just a step above everything. Um, beautiful, comfortable rooms and nice pool and just lovely grounds around it. Every other race hotel's got a lot to <laughs> live up to. We rode through Nagambi this morning. It was the first time I'd actually ridden through Nagambi. It's a really lovely little town actually there on the, on the lake. We sat and had a co coffee by the lake. But between training and racing, I like to um, eat a lot. <laughs> I'm a bit of a foodie, so I enjoy eating good food and drinking coffee, spending time with friends and just generally trying to not think about cycling too much actually, get away from it a little bit. The high country is now really renowned as the destination for cycling. Having grown up in the area, did you always have that threat of fire and were well aware of it? This summer we've had horrific bushfires and having people come back and it'll be good to see the trails getting filled up and the roads getting filled up with cyclists again. You and I have had fortune ride all over the world and this matches anything I've done. Couldn't agree more. I mean, we're so spoilt with the vineyards, the mountain views, it's just magic. So the ride that we've done today, that's a road ride that I know pretty well. But you're famous for being a world champion on the mountain bike. You've got to take me off road. Yes, we've got Mystic Mountain Bike Park here and then six other amazing locations. This is one of my favourite destinations. I'm coming back in Easter. Hopefully lots of other people come back as well and support the locals. Cheers, mate. Rochelle, I can assure you the high country, trust me on this, it's a really nice place to ride, it's a really, really tough place to race, and that's where they go tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be a very tough day, and that's why we're seeing a little bit of reserved racing here today, because it's a, you know, I've heard it's 30 kilometres from the bottom to the top, that's pretty solid, so... You heard right. Yeah, that's, uh, and then I heard Lucy Kennedy, one of the best riders, climbers in the world peloton say it's not too hard and I'm thinking okay for you mate. She's, she's wrong. <laughs> she's wrong yeah. yeah. No a tough day tomorrow in the uh, high country 
So uh, now we see a bit of attacking. We've seen the race heat up again here. So they've had their little bit of a lull. Rock Salt Attacker again. They're the team to initiate the aggressive racing. I like the way they've gone about it. They're at least trying to get something to split off the front. But again, Shepparton, it's turned on the weather. This is a perfect day to come up to Shepparton for a casual bike ride. It's an ideal day for the climbers that are in this race, but those that prefer the flatlands, the sprinters, they would have been hoping for a bit more wind to be able to split this peloton up. Yes and no, Matt. There's different type of sprinters. There's your strong sprinters and there's your lazy sprinters. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would have loved a day with no wind just to stay protected, float, a, float along at high speeds. It always gives me a, a buzz to be in the peloton, just floating wheels and just waiting for that uh, explosive 10, 15 seconds at the finish. And the fight coming into it as well. You know, sometimes you can put out your biggest max powers, 5Ks out just in positioning. So, uh, you know, for the sprint teams, uh, a lot of riders will be just thinking about where they need to be and where they need to put their riders at the finish. Just so. moments ago, the peloton went through the feed zone and some bad news, Janelle Crooks, who we've spoken about a bit today because she's been down the back of the peloton from Tipco Silicon Valley Bank. She's abandoned the race. Yeah, like I said, Matt, the doctor dropped by just before um, the start of the women's race and said that uh, he'd been spending some time with Janelle about her uh, uh, hip. She's got a very bad, uh, a lot of skin off but bruising and um, the bruising is causing her a little bit of pain. So he said that uh, he gave her the all clear to start but she was still a bit hesitant due to the pain of every pedal stroke so there might be just the time to rest and you know only the rider knows how how bad it is and if she feels that she needs to call it a day so she did the right thing by starting because you never know maybe the pain goes away after you know 10 or 15 minutes of pedaling but if it gets worse certainly uh, a good call for you know the rest of the season to jump off and it's not an easy thing to do and then you have all the questioning in your mind afterwards oh should I just have pushed on but uh, you know at the end of the day if you do make that decision there's normally a good reason for it so unfortunately Janelle Crooks the Tipco team Silicon Valley she's out now so uh, team's down to five riders they did come with a full full start of six so um, still five riders there a decision not taken lightly by Janelle Crooks to abandon the race. She was involved in the fall on Saturday at the Deakin University Kid 11's Great Ocean Road Race. She's had a good start to the season. Let's wish her all the best with a speedy recovery and that she returns to full fitness very early on and has a fruitful 2020. One rider, no doubt, that will be really disappointed about the abandonment of Janelle Crooks. For Janelle's sake, but also for her own sake, will be her teammate Sarah Gigante. As Janelle would have been pretty handy on the climb to Falls Creek tomorrow. Sarah Gigante, though, I'm sure that she will be able to still take care of business herself and put in her very best. Yeah, Tim Tipco, they've got uh, Sarah Gigante for tomorrow. Lauren Stevens will be the one to watch from their team today, and she could have uh, also benefited from the lead-out strength of Janelle Crooks as well. So a little bit of a blow for the team there, but no doubt we'll still see them in the mix at the finish of today's stage, and uh, Sarah Gigante will have to use all that phenomenal power that she's got tomorrow on that climb up to Falls Creek. One of their teammates in the white jersey, that's... Charlotte Lucas sitting in fourth position. She's got the yellow helmet on. She's the Oceana champion. This is her now out of the saddle. Drifts over to the gutter. Tempts anybody else to come and join her. Playing into the hands of the sprinters for now at least. See, this is what these breakaway riders need to do it in pairs, don't they? Because by themselves it's extremely hard. Impossible. So, yeah, just to get the, the only way a break's going to go here is that right mix of riders that are 100% committed in a moment where the peloton let them get a little bit of a gap. But uh, I can see this staying together all the way to the finish. And like I said, the reason is that um, a lot of riders are still getting familiar with each other's strengths and they're too scared to let a breakaway go, not knowing all of the names in the breakaway. So directors are obviously pretty nervous too back in the team cars, just telling them, okay, we need to keep, if we want a sprint finish, we want to be in the mix, let's just keep it together. But the attacks are going now, either side of the road. I get the impression there's a lot of teams that have been told not necessarily to force the breakaway, but to make sure they don't miss the breakaway as they're responding to the moves. The team that is the most aggressive so far, without question, is Rock Salt Attacker. Yeah, you might be right there, Matt. I think there's a lot of teams that have been told, just close everything, we want to keep this together for a sprint, but uh, not too many teams have been given that instruction to force a break. So Rock Salt Attacker, obviously, they will end up getting quite verbal, I think, with the other teams. Come on, let's give this a go. What are you waiting for? But uh, at the moment... 
the longer it goes on before the breakaway gets established, the less chance, obviously, it has of getting away because they realise, well, the closer we get to the finish, the less latitude we're going to get given by the peloton. So what's the point of wasting all this energy with such a tough, tough daunting day up Falls Creek to come in the next 24 hours? Yep, now we see the peloton just asking for their team cars to come up for drinks. So the feed opens after 30 kilometres. It closes with 20 kilometres to go. So good time now. Once you see one uh, rider put a hand up with a bottle, you generally see a, a few others follow and think, okay, this is a good time to stock up on fresh drinks for the team. Number 104 in the red colours of Sydney at Uni Stamine. That's Jennifer Darmody. 93 we've seen a bit of her going off course a little bit that's holly harris from specialized women's racing they're a team with one of the favorites for today's stage matilda reynolds who finished third in the first of the intermediate sprints ella Bloor, another one of their teammates number 95 she's been back and doing exactly that rochelle she's gone to collect some water bottles so too is the new recruit for mitchelton scott number five jessica roberts you said she might be the designated rider for the bottles duty today. She's got one or two down her jersey and a couple in the pockets. So she'll come and give some cold drinks to her teammates. New Zealand team just all getting together, together there. There'll be a lot of water consumed today. We're in the commentary position without expending any energy and we're going through a lot of water without the need to go <laughs> to and go take to... a nature break. That's it right. is dehydrating, doing nothing, let alone riding. Yeah, can you imagine how many bottles they've been through? Personally, I've been through about three or four, 750 mils while we've been here. So it's, um, it is very, very hot here uh, without that wind. See everyone uh, asking for bottles now while there's attacks going on off the front. It's Team Tipco who have put the pressure on. Well, it's not from a lack of trying in the last 10 kilometres or so. Certainly since the first of those intermediate sprints, there's been consistent attacks trying to get off the front. This is the specialised women's racing team once again at the front of the peloton. Yeah, well, we have seen plenty of attacks, Matt. Like you said, it, it has been pretty much one after the other attacking and stringing out on either side of the road, but uh, it's just not the right combination of riders, 100% committed. Not enough wind. See the white colours of the quarter Mentha team. That's Jessica Pratt who's riding up near the front. Yeah, the Swift Academy uh, winner of uh, the professional protein contract with Kenyon Tram, and uh, now we see some strong attacks going. The Kiwis now trying to get off the front. The reaction coming from Rock Salt Attacker. They're always there. They have a clear intent of getting into the breakaway. Just behind them, Pro Racing Sunshine Coast, also featuring in the action. It was Alexandra Martin Wallace from that team who won the first of the intermediate sprints in the race for the Bright Brewery points classification. I'll say I'm really loving the uh, the bikes there of the Pro Racing Sunshine Coast team. The bright, easy spot, aren't they? They are a very easy spot, those bright yellow bikes. Uh, fluoro is one of those things that comes and goes in fashion, but uh, it's more in fashion, I think, than out of fashion. It's always nice to have a very bright bike or kit. One of the riders then tried to throw their bidon off to the team support stuff on the right-hand side of the road, but they just didn't quite get enough purchase on it, and it didn't make it all the way across the road. You don't win too many friends when one of your bidons lands in the middle of the road and the peloton has to avoid it. Well, it's interesting. It's not something you go out and practice in training, throwing off a bottle over a peloton. So uh, some of the time uh, riders don't actually realise how much strength needs to go into that throw to clear the peloton. They have green zones here, which is great after their feeding zones where you can throw the bottles off in the green zone. Someone will go along and pick all of those up. Getting it wrong is a good way to get abused. <laughs> Yeah, well, interestingly, I mean, uh, the women's peloton in Europe is very, very verbal. It sounds a little more quiet here. For know, now, Australia. at least. But, uh, yeah, you know, there's different languages. and. But it doesn't matter what the language is. If you're being sworn at, you get a fair idea of the information that they're trying to get across to you. You may yeah, not absolutely. speak a single word of that language. Yeah. It's the tone of the delivery. Specialised women's racing at the front of the peloton on the right-hand side of the screen. The Mitchelton Scott riders in the black and yellow colours in the centre of the road. 
trying to not overheat. I won't say trying to stay cool because that is the impossible task today, but that is an attempt not to overheat. Yeah, well, Mitchell and Scott are doing everything we would expect them to do today. Obviously, the numbers are down, four riders, and they're all there, right? They've been um, policing the, the bunch very well. They've been just in the right position. I mean, they've got the strength and experience to keep closing down or making sure they're in a move if it does move off the front. But they've rode very well, um, given that they don't particularly have the numbers. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Gracie Elvin or Sarah Roy doing the sprint. I think they'll have a go, that's for sure. Their number one priority is keeping Lucy out of trouble. And Lucy Kennedy is a great domestique for Annemiek Van Vluten and Amanda Spratt in Europe. So it's nice to have a race that's clearly her target, that she has the team support. And I think she really does uh, thrive under the pressure as well. She's not a rider that just buckles. And no. you know, she, she's going to take this race on tomorrow and see if she can anyone can match her on that long climb up to Falls Creek. Given the course for the Olympic Games in Tokyo, I'm tipping that she'll be selected to make her Olympic debut this year. Yeah, I mean, small teams for the Olympics, four riders. The, you know, number one rider for Australia is no doubt to be Amanda Spratt, so three domestiques. So Lucy Kennedy will want to put a good showing in tomorrow because there's not that many uh, races that are actually... Well, like, OK, tomorrow's not a one-day, it's a two-day, but, but, you know, relatively, um, you know something like we're going to see at the Olympics with that much climbing. I think tomorrow's a good opportunity. It's still a long way away, the Olympics, but um, every opportunity you can get to prove that you can be there for, you know, with the best best climbers in the world, and uh, tomorrow's certainly one of those. Riders at the back of the peloton returning after going to the team cars to collect water. 141, that is at least Fraser from the Velo Project women's team. That's an all-Kiwi team. It's good to see them out here and racing. Most of that team, they've been down the back of the peloton throughout the stage so far, Rochelle. Yeah, we've seen them off the front a couple of times, but uh, like we were saying before, there is there is a lot of strong riders in this race that are spending a lot of time at the back of the peloton or off the front of the peloton. Uh, it's more like your, uh, just your sprinters and confident Europeans sitting there in the middle of the peloton, staying out of the wind. But um, some riders just are strong enough to do it that way, off the back or off the front. Now Mitchelton Scott on the left-hand side of the screen, the black and yellow colours. They have limited numbers. They've got two less riders than every other team. They've started with four. So they have to be really sparing in the way they use their resources. They'll be pretty happy with how this stage has unfolded so far. They haven't had to do any work. And now they're just making sure that Lucy Kennedy, the defending champion, stays out of trouble. Inside the last 55 kilometres, there's been a few attempts to try and break away, but there's been no successful moves off the front. So far, Rochelle, we've had the one intermediate sprint. Martin Wallace won that intermediate sprint. Of the pre-stage favourites, it was only Matilda Reynolds who participated in that. But those that we consider as prospects to win the yellow jersey, so far, today has gone pretty comfortably for them. Yeah, a pretty cruisy day, not too much happening. I mean, there has been a lot of attacks, but those riders are staying well protected and have their teammates to close those gaps. They've had a pretty cruisy day. I think we're going to see some fireworks coming into the finish, but uh, definitely a day for the sprinters. And I think they'll, uh, I guess, around the 40, 30 kilometres to go marks where they really want to be well positioned at the front and start thinking about, you know, is this going to be my day? There'll be a really big battle for the final corner. The last corner comes with around 300, 350 metres to go. And the approach to it is quite wide as well. So any team that wants to control the race at the back end of the stage, there's a real trap in going too early because it's easy to improve your position charging for that last corner. Yeah, and I think that's another reason why we saw a couple of the riders get up there for the intermediate sprint. We saw that you can have... We had the uh, LA team did a fantastic lead out but just way too early. So, you know, timing is everything and I think it's about knowing how long your riders can go for and that's a, a really important um, thing to trial in the intermediate sprint. So coming into the finish, like you said, Matt, it's very easy to go too early on this sprint so you've just got to be patient. Let's have a look at what has happened so far. One. 75 riders took to the start line in Shepparton for the opening stage of the Lexus of Blackburn at Herald Sun Tour, the first of two stages. Tomorrow is to Falls Creek. As they rolled out under ideal conditions, there was a slight delay due to a mechanical problem for Lucy Kennedy, the rider who wears number one after having won the race last year. The race director, John Trevorrow, reeled the flag in, and as racing started, there were a few attempts to try and get away, but none successful so far. 
The Thailand national champion of the white colours, Menafan, abandoning the race, and in the process, she almost took Holly Harris with her. At the intermediate sprint, it was Martin Wallace who collected maximum points ahead of Stevens and then Reynolds in third position. It was tight, but enough to make it a win for one of the youngest riders in the race, Martin Wallace. Holly Harris then returned to the peloton with some encouragement from her teammate, Ella Bloor, of the Specialised Women's Racing Team. Lots of efforts by riders to try and get off the front. This was Bree Vine from the Step Forward IT Suzuki team, a team that's been in the uh, National Road Series peloton for quite a while. This is a great chance for them to prove themselves against some international competition. But unfortunately for Bree Vine, there was no couple of riders coming across to her. She was reeled back in by the peloton. We're now down to 53 kilometres remaining. Peloton is all together. The next of the intermediate sprints, that is just on 33 kilometres away. Number 23 riding up towards the front of the peloton, that is Sarah Gigante, and she sits behind Bree Wilson of Rock Salt Attacker. Number 21 at the back, that is Lauren Stevens, and Rochelle, she did participate in that first intermediate sprint, and she finished in second position, so she will be one to watch at the back end of Stage 1. Yeah, absolutely. She's a very experienced rider as well. As we see, number 83, that's Emily Herfoss. Also uh, very young but very experienced. She just actually naturally gets the workings of a race. Uh, team captain for the quarter for team at such a young age. But she does read a race very well and she is uh, very relaxed in all situations. So Emily Herfoss just dropping back probably to have a chat with the team director. She's about 15 years younger than Justine Barrow but she's got about <laughs> eight years, years more, more experience. experience. Yeah, a very experienced uh, rider and uh, I mean she reminds me of Tiffany Cromwell. She just gets racing. She gets the um, the race tactics and can read a race really well. She's got bike IQ. She's got bike IQ, yep. This is Rock Salt Attacker. This is the team of Emily Herfoss, incidentally, at the front. Well, no doubt the most aggressive rider of the day is likely to come from the Rock Salt Attacker team, but they've all been equally aggressive, uh, very active in the race, and now just sitting on the front, controlling the pace. So the Quarter Mentha team of Australia coming to the front. They've got some young riders in there just here for experience. As we look again at 21 Lauren Stevens and Emily Herfoss of Rock Salt Attacker just having a little stretch there, relaxing down the back of the peloton. Well, down to the last 51 kilometres, the next of the intermediate sprints, that's at 19.3 kilometres to go. And at this rate, Rochelle, I don't see a breakaway forming. No, I'm pretty sure it won't either. Like I said, early season, a lot of riders not knowing each other's strengths. They want to close everything down. Such a hard day tomorrow up to Falls Creek that I think they're pretty content with just bringing this down to a sprint. And we'll see a pretty aggressive last 10 kilometres, very fast, jostling for positions. And it's a big opportunity for UCI points as well. So a lot of teams will be desperate to get a result here. And it's pancake flat, so there's no logical launching pad for a mm. breakaway to try and move off the front. There's not a breath of wind either. There's certainly none within this tent that we're commentating from at the finish line. And it's mid-30s. How much does an impact that the heat have? How much of an impact does the heat have on, on the race when it is in the mid-30s and they're just constantly trying to stay hydrated? Yeah, look, I think that's one of the challenges, biggest challenges of today, actually, and for tomorrow, um, how well you can get through today hydrated. And uh, sometimes it sounds easier than it actually is because whilst it might look pretty calm to us it's always pretty hectic in the peloton fighting for position you've always got pressure on your legs and trying to move that one position forward as we see riders here just taking as many bottles as they can perhaps a little bit of ice down the jersey as well just to cool them down this so. is maker bogard at the back of the labtc team she comes from a famous cycling family. Her uncle was a multiple stage winner at the Tour de France. That was Yellow Nidam back in the 80s and the 90s. And she's only fairly young in her career. She's only in her early 20s. But what we've seen of her so far in Australia has been pretty aggressive. Unfortunately for that team, they've lost one of their riders, uh, Manifant, the Thailand national champion. So they're down to just three riders already. 
Yeah, it makes a big difference coming into the finish too for, uh, you know, just keeping your riders out of trouble and staying together. And like uh, Pat was telling us from out on the course, it's what's so important at the finish of today is those time gaps coming into the finish. It's going to be a real big fight to make sure there's no gaps between the riders. Stage one of the Lexus of Blackburn at Herald Sun Tour, 50 kilometres remaining in the opening stage. The high country is now really renowned as the destination for cycling. Having grown up in the area, did you always have that threat of fire and were well aware of it? This summer we've had horrific bushfires and having people come back and it'll be good to see the trails getting filled up and the roads getting filled up with cyclists again. You and I have had fortune ride all over the world and this matches anything I've done. Couldn't agree more. I mean, we're so spoilt with the vineyards, the mountain views, it's just magic. So the ride that we've done today, that's a road ride that I know pretty well. But you're famous for being a world champion on the mountain bike. You've got to take me off road. Yes, we've got Mystic Mountain Bike Park here and then six other amazing locations. This is one of my favourite destinations. I'm coming back in Easter. Hopefully lots of other people come back as well and support the locals. Cheers, mate. Stage one of the Lexus of Blackburn at Herald Sun Tour and for the men's race, which has already been completed, it all got underway in Nagambi, which is the home of the Mitchelton Winery, so too the brewery and distillery. It is also famously the home of Black Caviar, one of the greatest racehorses of all time. By the lake, they have the famous Caravan Park. There's a wonderful running track around the outside, or you can just have a leisurely stroll, take to the water itself and go for a bit of a paddle. It's a place that is just about an hour and a half to the north of Melbourne, around about another 30 minutes on, and you make it all the way through to Shepparton, which is where the peloton is heading for. The race is starting to heat up. A little bit of picture break up, unfortunately. We do apologise for that. But I just spotted the colours of the quarter meant the national team trying to break away at the front of the peloton. Multiple attempts to get away, Rochelle. It hasn't been for a lack of trying for a breakaway to form in today's stage. The conditions are just too good. They're good conditions, but like you said, the uh, Cordamantha national team, they have been uh, very aggressive. They've been covering all the moves and they have been trying to push a break as well. So it's all about experience for those riders um, in the national team there. And we see now finally a little bit of a gap, but only two riders, Matt. Is it going to be enough? I don't think so. I think they need a good combination of four or five riders minimum to uh, get any established kind of breakaway. And you won't be surprised to see that the other team that's represented out in front is Rock Salt Attacker. Well, that's no surprise. They've been uh, in every single move today, and now you see the peloton, how quickly they all react. And that's the Tipco team in the blue colours with the yellow helmet. They close it down so quickly, and that reaction drags the whole peloton with them, and we're back to status quo. A little communication there between the riders and uh, as we said it looks like with 48 kilometers to go that everything is going to be closed down but they're definitely uh, this is not an, ha hasn't been an easy race Matt there's been attacks going the whole time jostling for positions and the heat as well here goes another attack but it has to be a combination of riders yeah it can't be just one rider going off the front they need some company one is not enough. Rock Salt Attacker in second position responding again, but the entire peloton on her wheel, it will just close things down. It won't force the breakaway. This is the step forward IT Suzuki team at the front trying to force the breakaway. The teams that have predominantly been trying to get off the front have been the local teams that ride in the National Road Series which is good to see that they're not intimidated by the likes of Mitchelton Scott and LABTC or the Tipco Silicon Bank team. And also Astana. We've not seen a lot of those riders, but they will be Smart looking, though. looking for a sprint finish. Astana, I actually... Ast I have not seen one rider one rider from Astana, which is smart riding by them because they only have four riders. So they, there's one right now, just gone through the corner as we speak, but sandwiched in the middle of the peloton, well protected. They've been very well hidden in this peloton. Now we see a strong attack from number 45. Riley McMullen from the Velo Project team getting herself off the front. A check across the shoulder. She wants some company, but not too much. Not all of you. She just wants a select group to come across. 
strong rider just getting into a rhythm there's a lull in the peloton there but that's not exactly what she wants she wants a rider to come across as soon as possible to share that work or she'll be doing more damage than she'll be able to manage in the later part of the race so here comes another rider it's charlotte lucas once again the oceana national uh, not national champion region <laughs> champion Checking. The Kiwi with a flick of the elbow. She rides for the American Tipco Silicon Valley Bank team. She's been pretty active. She's been the one rider from that team that has been the most active. Unfortunately for them, they had Janelle Crooks abandon the race at the feed zone. She's still paying the price for the crash that she had on the weekend at the Kettle Evans Great Ocean Road Race. Yeah, and they'll be saving a few riders, the team Tipco, to look after Lawrence Stevens coming into the finish. Well, this attempt to go off the front by McCallum has been nullified. Let's get back down to Pat Shaw. Pat, multiple attempts, but still no breakaway. Yes, it was interesting to see those surges up, uh, the slight rise. And uh, in the end there, it was rolling McMullen that surged ahead. But Fasty in the peloton now across the road. But it's sort of, you can almost feel the tension watching the riders come up from behind the vehicle that we're in. And it seems that just so far, the spring won't break, but I think we're going to see it shortly. This part of the course is probably the most difficult challenge for the riders for the day. The stage is predominantly flat, but uh, at the moment this uh, section has about 4 to 5 percent rises for about the next kilometre and a half, so there is a good chance with speed differential with the pack and attacking riders we could see someone forge ahead. Oh, Pat, if somebody doesn't get away in the next two kilometres, I don't think we're going to see a breakaway really get established today and it is a sprinter's paradise oh i think you're 100 percent correct the, the course is far too quick on the rest of the uh, journey for the riders today but we're seeing further surges now i think the difficult thing is that that every single team feels like they've got a chance in this finish today even if you have a look at um you can go down through uh some of the teams that we spoke about before which was the valo project women's team i think uh georgia danford from new zealand is a pretty quick finisher at Stalchest chest and track experience as well. So every every team from Team 1 to 15 feels they have a rider in the right circumstances that could win this stage in the Shepherd. And, and so why risk it by going on the attack? Do you dare to stick your neck out and pick a winner of the stage? Oh, I certainly do. I'll pick Ruby Rose McGannon to beat uh, Matilda Reynolds. Uh, and that will be the top two. And I think Peter Mullins might fill the podium out. She's uh, actually having a bit of a re-coming in the cycling scene over summer, and it seems like she's highly motivated by the girls that she's surrounded by at Rock Salt Attacker. Well, Pat, you're on the public record. We are going to hold you to it. So, Rochelle, Pat Shaw has gone with the locals, and he's gone with the young rising star, one of the revelations of the summer, Ruby Roseman Gannon. Look, I think Ruby Roseman Gannon does have the uh, ability to win this race. I just wonder if she's going to have... She's got the strength. Does she have the top-end speed to beat... Elena Sierra. Uh, that's uh, going to be an interesting one, and uh, Elena Sierra is probably not too familiar with the strength and speed of Ruby Roseman Gannett. So Which could be to Ruby's advantage. advantage. Could well be. So, um, look, they're the, they're the two riders I'd, I'd definitely be watching, and, uh, you know, the outsider, Matilda Reynolds, definitely a chance to be up there. Peter Mullins, we've mentioned as well, but uh, the outstanding favourite on, you know, world global cycling level would be Elena Sierra, but Ruby Roseman Gannon hasn't uh, really been able to test herself yet against these riders. So, you know, very close to Chloe Hosking there at the National Crit Championship. So we know she's got the speed. She's raced against Chloe Hosking a lot, who is one of the fastest in the world. And so far, Ruby Roseman Gannon, I think she's finished second to Chloe three or four times, if you include sprints for fifth yeah. place behind a breakaway. Yeah. So definitely got the ability to win. Will she have the experience and uh, confidence coming into the finish? Uh, Lena Sierra comes off a second place at the Cadellavans Great Ocean Road Race, winning a sprint, so she'll have uh, confidence high as well. So let's just see uh, how it all goes coming into the finish. This is Rock Salt Attacker on the front of the peloton. Not attacking, just stretching the peloton out, putting them under a bit of pressure. I quite like this move. And this could be to the favour of Peter Mullins, because for them, Peter Mullins, she's their best hope to win the stage today. And the heart of the stage is the higher the chances of Peter Mullins being able to win the sprints. If it's a slow, comfortable day, then that really gives the likes of Ruby Roseman Gannon a bigger chance of winning because the younger legs will be slightly fresher. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's why we've seen Roxholder Attacker just attacking non-stop, even though they know it's probably likely to come back together and be a bunch sprint. But for the likes of Peter Mullins, she needs a really hard race. She's one of the fittest people I know in the world. She's an endurance athlete, and uh, the harder the race is today, the better her chances are at the finish. We'll be looking for her at the back end of the stage. She doesn't need a lead-out train, Peter Mullins. She no. can ride position on her own. Yeah, that's, uh, that's one thing I think also about Ruby Roseman Gannon. She's not been um, familiar with having a, a, a dedicated train. Well, for Ruby Roseman Gannon, for the Pro Racing Sunshine Coast team, it's a new team for her this season. It's a team that supports riders with their education. She's in the final year. She's got six subjects to go in a science, neuroscience degree. So if bike racing doesn't work out, don't worry about Ruby. She's going <laughs> to be fine. She's set. She'll be fine. She is very sharp. And the same with uh, Sarah Gigante, which is a name that you're going to hear a lot of tomorrow because she's such a strong rider. And we saw her strength at the national championships last year particularly, but um, also juggling cycling and studies. Perfect score in her final year at high school. Yeah. In the same year that she collected a silver medal at the Junior World Championships and broke both of her arms. <laughs> Phenomenal. <laughs> it has to give you some confidence uh, in the cycling world to have that back up with uh, having the education completed. As we see the riders still just throwing down as much water as they can. That's um, also in function of tomorrow's race. Let's try and stay hydrated today. The white colours in the middle, that is the quarter meant the Australian national team. One rider we haven't spoken about, another one of the youngsters, is Chloe Moran. Yeah, definitely uh, one I've got highlighted for today's stage. She should be up there, uh, Jessica Pratt or Chloe Moran, but they're both very fast at the finish, so they'll um, definitely, no doubt, have a train just for experience. They'll have the lead-out train going, the Australian national team, so watch out in the last five kilometres. They'll have... I'm pretty sure they'll have it all together. Their main priority is working together as a team and the experience rather than results, so very important that they get together and uh, practice a lead-out train coming into the finish. 23 kilometres to go to the second of the intermediate sprints. The first intermediate sprint was taken out by Alexandra Martin-Wallace. Second position was Lauren Stevens. Third place was Matilda Reynolds. This is the first of two stages in the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour. And it starts and finishes in Shepparton, 95 kilometres. Tomorrow it starts and finishes at Falls Creek. It is a big day of climbing. Let's take a look at the course. Ed, opening day here in Shepparton. Pancake flat, a perfect day for the sprinters. It's then off to Falls Creek. There'll be no hiding at Falls Creek. Descend down to the bottom. That could be fearful for some of the portion of the descent. And there's a few technical corners in there. You can make the most of it on the climbing part of the descent. It'll be a very interesting stage tomorrow, that's for sure. So back to today's stage, 40 kilometres still to go and it has been a uh, an active race there's been attacks going now there's echelon starting to form and it's team tipco i like this this is the team of sarah gigante and lauren stevens they have decided let's not wait for the sprint finish let's not play into their hands this is a good tactical move yeah this is certainly going to do some damage you can see riders just fighting for the edge of the road and it's not easy back there in the line so this is a very serious move from team tipco and it is almost causing some splits. There's a few riders just having that look across the shoulder. A couple of the riders from the Mitchelton Scott team trying to move around the outside and improve their position. Charlotte Lucas in the white colours now coming through to the front. They'll be so disappointed that they don't have Janelle Crooks with them because that extra body and the horsepower of Janelle Crooks would be really useful under these circumstances. Yeah, that would have made a huge difference. Um, no, they would have known they were going to play this tactic. They would have known this section of the course is where they were going to put the hammer down. So look at this out the back. There's going to be riders now dropping like flies because this is doing some serious damage. This is doing significant damage because number 82, Peter Mullins, one of the pre-stage favourites, she has been caught napping and... She is paying the price. 81, her teammate, Justine Barrow, the silver medalist from the national championships. Rochelle, this is catching some big names out. This is incredible, Matt. We've seen Roxholder Attacker on the attack right from the start of the race. Very aggressive. And all of a sudden, they are in very, very big trouble. Not only one or two of them, but three of them. 
And look at the gaps for me and here. And Matilda Reynolds, number 96, a pre-stage favourite. One of the sprinters. Normally the sprinters ride perfect position. Matilda Reynolds, she got lulled into a false sense of security. There's some work to do from back there. Wouldn't this have been fantastic? With one extra rider, these riders are digging very, very deep to do some damage here. That was Nina Kessler rolling through to the front. And Mitchell and Scott sense the danger there as Gracie Elvin just casually moves up to the wheel of Lucy Kennedy and it'll all be about protecting Lucy at the moment just keeping her out of the wind there you see Gracie Elvin's gonna have to do the hard work on the windy side to keep Lucy Kennedy protected and you can see also from Mitchell and Scott Sarah Roy protecting Lucy Kennedy just giving her that little pocket to sit in which is actually giving a big advantage to the rest of the peloton I feel like the pace has backed off ever so slightly because you just saw most of the riders from Mitchelton Scott in unison synchronised drinking. Yeah, it could also be a bit of directional change as well, but Rock sold a tackle with three riders struggling down the back on the attack on the front as well. This has got to be Emily Herfoss, doesn't it? Once again at the front, causing the trouble. She's wanting to make the most of it. This is great riding by Roxalt Attacker. At the moment, it's almost impossible to give the Quest Shepherd and most combative prize. If you had to give it, could you give it to a team? You'd like to, wouldn't you? Because the whole team have been very, very impressive today. But uh, her force here has just moved to the middle of the road to give some protection to some other riders. I'm not sure if... Uh, that was the right move because Mitchell and Scott sitting pretty there and uh, but you still see a lot of riders in trouble here and it's uh, number 81 there. Justine Barrow with number 82 Peter Mullins. They need to move forward. 37.7 kilometres remaining. Mullins is slipping up the left hand side of the road to try and collect a little bit more shelter. As the bunch fans out across the road here, Peter Mullins is using every trick in the book to improve her position without wasting any energy. Yeah, well, she's one rider that certainly can do that. She's one of the most experienced and comfortable riders in a peloton. So using the uh, very, very edge of the road to move up there on the protected side uh, might be just what saved Peter Mullins there using her bike handling skills. And now Mitchelton Scott, they come to the front. They pick up the pacemaking that was started by Tipco Silicon Valley Bank. Number 93 at the back. This is Holly Harris. She also wants to improve her position. The one rider from Tipco who's been caught out is number 23, Sarah Gigante. Well, she actually was on the front. Was she? She was in that echelon at the original uh, on the front pushing the pace there. So They need to keep her at the front. She's their best chance tomorrow. 65, this is Francesca Sewell who last year won the time trial and the road race at the national championships in the under-19s, and she is still an under-19s rider, and she's against some of the very best in the world. They're looking very comfortable there. She sits the bike Jesus well. Sir, she races yes. up in the Gold Coast, and she's been doing a bit of club racing in the past with the likes of Robbie McEwen. That's one way to learn. Yeah, it certainly is. No, she looks comfortable. I mean, she is hurting, but she's very solid on the bike there. Uh, very nice uh, position. 23, Sarah Gigante. She won't want to stay back there for too much longer and her team won't want to leave her back there because all of a sudden Mitchelton Scott have moved to the front and you can see the split in around about 20th position. This could cause some big problems for those caught behind. Yeah, Mitchelton Scott just sensing the danger at this uh, section of the road that they're better off actually making the riders hurt and being on the front foot here rather than just in the gutter. So they're going to swap off turns here to stay out of trouble. The only rider who won't be rolling through from Mitchelton Scott, you wouldn't imagine, is Lucy Kennedy. And she's the tall figure nearly at the back of that little contingent of riders as there's another split happening in around about 10th position. Meanwhile, at the back of the peloton, Ella Harris from the New Zealand team. She's been distanced. So too is Kirsty Deacon in the yellow colours of Veris Racing. Sophie Edwards is the next in line. Here comes Peter Mullins around the outside. Reynolds is with her. Matilda Reynolds and Peter Mullins, they train together in Bendigo. Start training now. Well, look, they are slowly making their way up and they have to do it on the hard side now. I think Peter Mullins has just said, it's now or never, I've got to take you to the front. And uh, Lucy Kennedy staying on the protected side as well. How much easier is she doing it by comparison to Reynolds and Mullins? They're spending a lot more energy. It's getting vocal. It's getting vocal. They're under a lot of pressure here. There's a lot of uh, communication going. You see down the back there, riders all over the place so the pressure is going down at the front and there's the splits and mullins and reynolds they've been caught behind the splits so too is martin wallace number 114 
Number 81 from Rock Salt Attacker. That was Justine Barrow. She's been distanced. Lucy Kennedy will be happy with that because she saw how well Justine Barrow climbed at the national championships around Buninyong. Yeah, look, this is a significant split. I do think there's still an opportunity to come back uh, if the direction of the road changes, direction of the wind, but uh, there'll certainly be a lot of riders panicking back in that uh, second split. Well, it could come back together. Alternatively, it could blow out to a huge time gap. Plenty of incentive here for Mitchelton Scott because they've created a gap between a couple of riders that they would have thought, we need to keep an eye on them, up Falls Creek. And Justine Barrow is certainly one of them. Now, that's where experience comes through with the Mitchell and Scott team. They stayed very relaxed in the uh, start of the race. Probably uh, had this all uh, well planned. You can see the gap there. It's just getting slightly bigger and bigger. It's going in the wrong direction for this group. Holly Harris, number 93 from Specialised Women's Racing. She needs to get to the front of this group and start working because Matilda Reynolds has missed the split. Life is a little difficult at the back. This is the front. This is where all the action is happening. And the four riders from Mitchelton Scott have all made it into this group. Their sports director, Alejandro Gonzalez, will be very pleased. It looks like Ruby Roseman Gannon is in there for Pro Racing Sunshine Coast. Yeah, Ruby Roseman Gannon. Pat's pick for the day, so he's, uh, he's looking good, she's well positioned, she's such a strong rider and uh, very... Uh... Matilda Reynolds has made contact at the back, so too has Peter, Peter Mullins. Mullins. So they have spent a lot of energy, but it's been money well spent and they're in contact with the leading group, that is impressive. And that's the experience of Peter Mullins for sure, um, knowing when to use her energy, when to stay relaxed. Well, Pat Shaw, the race has completely changed complexion. It certainly has, Matt Keener, I can tell you. The four Mitchells and Scott riders at start line today have made this split, but this group that's in front isn't currently set. They continue to ride the gutter. I would like to open it up if I was in that group. We can see sprinting at the back. A couple of the riders really struggling. One of those seems to be Peter Mullins in the rock Rocksold attack again. Jessica Pratt, she's right up there. So too is the young rider we spoke about earlier, Ruby Rose McGannon. She looks really, really comfortable. She's in there. We've got uh, makeup. I think she's also in there as well. We're waiting for more names to come. All national team. We've already seen Jessica Pratt, as I said. Josie Talbot there also. And the entire Astana team is there, riding in support of Alina Sierra. They've done no pacemaking and haven't wasted a single calorie today. They've ridden brilliantly so far, Pat. Hey, the Swiss women's racing team. Jamie Gunning is there. Seems that Matilda Reynolds was also there, and Taryn Heather. I've also spotted eyes on uh, Emily Herfoss from the Rock Salt Attacker team also. So there's some significant uh, representation in this group. But the gap looks like it's around the one-minute mark. Thanks, Pat. Pat Shaw out on course, a man who's won the Australian National Road Series in the past. And I get the impression, Rochelle, he's enjoying seeing the likes of Ruby Roseman Gannon and Emily Herfoss mixing it with the internationals. Yeah, it's fantastic. They haven't missed that split and they've been there. They're strong enough to put themselves in that position. So it's, uh, it's great to see them really up there amongst it. But uh, like we said, all the Astana team, we haven't seen them at all until this break happened and they're all in there so uh well played that means that sierra's probably got good legs and they'll uh definitely want to try and get her up for the the win at the finish this is the lead group once again josie talbot is there so too jessica pratt and georgia whitehouse for the quarter mentor team nina kessler is there for the tipco squad she's number 26 sitting at the back of the group Number 96 has managed to make it across, Matilda Reynolds. She spent some biscuits getting there, but it was a good investment. She has Taryn Heather and Jamie Gunning on her team for company. Number 91, that's Jamie Gunning. She's the current Australian under 23 road champion, and she's very much looking forward to the climb up Falls Creek tomorrow. Yep. Well, now they've got to work a little bit harder being in this small group with 30 kilometres to go just went from being so calm to so explosive. 
but Num um, number 51 in the white colors that's the chilean national champion and that is ahumada she's got a couple of teammates here with her also ramirez is there she's the rider in the blue colors they're on the same team but ahumada wears the white jersey as the national champion of chile and the entire astana team have managed to make the split and you can see the white colors at the back of the group here number 35 stage favorite that is alina sierra the winner last year of the deacon university cadell evans great ocean road race second this time around I tell you she looks good matt she looks fit she looks calm Alina sierra she's got the cuban flag on the jersey on the left hand side just behind that national team jersey number 35 that's your favorite for today's sprint she won cadell evans great ocean road race last year second this year as we see now, number 33, Katia Raguza, the Italian, but it's uh, Mitchell and Scott still on the front, just turning it over there. 30 kilometres remaining. The race has been torn apart. It was Tipco who started it. Mitchell and Scott, they're trying to finish it. The high country is now really renowned as the destination for cycling. Having grown up in the area, did you always have that threat of fire and were well aware of it? This summer we've had horrific bushfires and having people come back and it'll be good to see the trails getting filled up and the roads getting filled up with cyclists again. You and I have had fortune ride all over the world and this matches anything I've done. Couldn't agree more. I mean, we were so spoilt with the vineyards, the mountain views, it's just magic. So the ride that we've done today, that's a road ride that I know pretty well. But you're famous for being a world champion on the mountain bike. You've got to take me off road. Yes, we've got Mystic Mountain Bike Park here and then six other amazing locations. This is one of my favourite destinations. I'm coming back in Easter. Hopefully lots of other people come back as well and support the locals. Cheers, mate. Shepard is hosting the start and the finish of the opening stage of the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour. It is two hours to the north of Melbourne. It's got plenty of live music. The Chocolate Factory is one of the most popular spots, particularly for the kids and maybe the parents. The Motor Museum, that is one of the draw cards. It's got one of the best public pools you're ever likely to visit, which conveniently is located right next door to the Caravan Park. Plus, they've got the Velodrome, which hosts the New Year's Day Carnival, one of the big carnivals over the Christmas break in Victoria. Speaking of breaks, the Peloton has has been broken into tiny little pieces. Out in front, the defending champion, Lucy Kennedy, Rochelle Gilmore, importantly, she has all of her teammates with her. Yeah, for the Mitchell and Scott team, they are definitely uh, approaching this tour for the GC with Lucy Kennedy wearing number one, the former champion here at the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour. She really wants to win this, so I think the Mitchell and Scott team are 100% dedicated to keeping her out of trouble. No doubt they'll have a bit of a sprint, but uh, they may actually just stay with Lucy Kennedy and make sure no time gaps are uh, given at the finish. So you can see the tall rider number one, Lucy Kennedy, just chatting a lot with her teammates, make sure she gets the easiest ride possible so she can unleash tomorrow on that climb up to Falls Creek. Number 21, that's Lauren Stevens. We know that she's sprinting reasonably well. Number 82, Peter Mullins. Wasn't she living dangerously? Well, she had a hard task too, bringing Matilda from the back group to the front group. They're probably the only two riders capable of bridging across that gap, and they went across like a steam train. And I thought that would be it for Peter Mullins, but she's still in there, so she'll be a top five. A really good bet, bet for top five. The quarter men, the team have done really well to get three riders up there in the break. There's 23 riders in total in this front group. All four members of the Mitchelton Scott team are there. Three members of LABTC, and they've only got three riders remaining in the race. We've got at least two in the group from Tipco. I haven't spotted number 23, Sarah Gigante. I think she has missed the split. The entire contingent of riders from Astana, they've made the group, notably the Colombian champion, Alina Sierra. Ejolico are there with at least two riders. They've got Ahumada, the Chilean national champion, and Ramirez, they've managed to make the group. Corda Menta, I've spotted Jessica Pratt, Josie Talbot, and I think I've seen Georgia Whitehouse also in this group. 
number 61 in the white colours. That is Jessica Pratt. 62 in the white colours, a quarter Mentha. That is Josie Talbot. Now rolling through to the front, number 83, Emily Herfoss. She's had a great start to the season on the back of a fantastic 2019. Nina Kessler rolling through. Number six, this is Gracie Elvin, a pre-stage favourite. She's got herself in a good position. This group may split even further, Rochelle, before they reach the finish line. Because the riders at the back, it looks as if they're sitting the wheel, but they're not getting much shelter with the crosswind. Yeah, everyone's trying to be on that left side of the road to get shelter. And uh, if a little gap or somebody just calls it a day and lets the pressure off the pedals, then, then we just see little gaps forming like that. It's, uh, it depends if another team is willing to put the pressure down because uh, Mitchell and Scott are actually doing this just to stay out of trouble rather than split it right up. So number 23, so Sarah Gigante, maybe? Yes, No, this is. is the second group. Oh, second group. This so is the Sarah, second Sarah group. Sarah Gigante hasn't made it, unfortunately. And they're at 29 seconds, and she has number 81 with her, Justine Barrow, who does the mash for Cashy Rides, at least a gear or two bigger than everybody else. This group particularly with Sarah Gigante and Justine Barrow in this group, they have to keep on working. They will lose time, but they need to limit the damage. This is Holly Harris, number 93. Just in front of her is Ella Ball, number 95. Two riders from the Specialised Women's Racing Team. But the good news for that team is they don't need to do any chasing because they have Jamie Gunning in that lead group. She can climb tomorrow and potentially challenge for yellow. And they have Matilda Reynolds in the front group who can potentially win today's stage. So those two, they sit at the back and they hope that the peloton, the lead group, they ride off into the shepherd and distance. Yeah, look, normally I'd say back to the lead group now, but 30 second, 36 seconds is not huge. Normally you say there's a chance for them to come back, but the uh, the real issue here is that because so, so many teams have strength in numbers in the front here, that the pace will just slowly keep picking up to keep it under control and uh, keep their sprinters out of trouble coming into the finish. And number one, that's Lucy Kennedy. She has barely touched the front, but she has barely been more than 10 wheels from the front. Number that is textbook perfect. Number 35 there, the Cuban Sierra. We uh, tagged her as the clear favourite before today's race, whereas Matt was backing. Uh, what was Matt's call for today? He was going Pat for Matilda. Yeah. Uh, he went for Ruby Roseman Gannon. That's right, Ruby Roseman Gannon. So. And there she is, number 115. So Ruby, she's been one of the revelations of the season. Oh yeah, and she looks quite comfortable too, Ruby Roseman Gannon. Just having a look around to see what teammates she has with her. Gracie I'll tell you Elman how many. There. None. No. So How many does she need? She doesn't want to drop too None. far back to have a really good look through these riders and see if she can find a teammate. But uh, she is having a good look around, hoping that there's some support there. It would be a huge win if she got the stage today in this group without any teammates. 83, that's Emily Herfoss. She has been one of the animators of the stage today. We've seen the Rock Salt and Attacker Colours consistently at the front trying to cause some damage. Gracie Elvin with the water bottle in the back pocket, delivering for number one. And look at the way number 35, Alina Sierra, is using her teammate, number 31, Ivanuk, just to stay to the right-hand side so she's protected each time she wants to improve her position. Yeah, and it's a little bit difficult uh, for the riders coming out from Europe because there's so many riders here that just race on a, a domestic level that they don't know, am I safe sitting behind this wheel? You know, am I going to have to jump around three or four riders? So it's time now with 25 kilometres for Sierra to ask her teammates to keep her well positioned right at the front. Number one, Lucy Kennedy, having a little chat in the race radio. That's not necessarily to her teammates. That might be back to the team car asking Alejandro Gonzalez, where do we go to next? They won't want to miss any tricky little turns. They want to make sure that they're paying close attention to the front of the race. And what's the time gap to the chasers? They're not surrendering. It's pegged even. It's still at 28 seconds. It could yet all come back together. There's absolutely a chance that it could come back together. Uh, I think the riders in the breakaway would uh, prefer just to keep the pressure on the pedals so they can keep that gap coming into the finish. But uh, the riders chasing will not give up. There's enough riders there with an interest to get back into the mix. How motivated will some of the riders in this group, particularly the Mitchelton Scott team, be by the fact that the silver medalist from the Australian Championships, Justine Barrow, 
And the gold medalists from the time trial, Sarah Gigante, are in that second group. Yeah, the two riders that uh, Mitchell and Scott will be pleased are not in this break, and that's why we'll see Mitchell and Scott riders keep tapping through for turns on the front, keep the pace high enough. And therefore, in contrast, riders from their teams, the two riders we just spoke about that are in this front group, might roll through and do a false turn of pace and back things off a little bit, give the chasers a chance. Yeah, definitely. Um, they're trying to just... This is kind of the calm before the storm with 24.3 kilometres to go, a 28-second gap. This is calm. Yeah. You and I have slightly different <laughs> definitions of calm. No, they, they look like they've just settled into a rhythm now. I mean, there's some riders that are fighting pretty hard in that peloton, but if you just look at the faces now, they're just rolling over there on the front without... Uh, this is the storm be before the typhoon, I think, is what you're <laughs> no, looking for. this is the calm before the storm. We're going to see some riders try to jump out of this, uh, this front pack to try and go for a solo victory coming into the finish. But the pace, I mean, Mitchell and Scott are very smart too. They'll keep the pace just high enough that it's, um, it makes riders think twice about going on the attack. Number six, that's Gracie Elvin. Number five is Jessica Roberts. They're trying to drive the tempo. Sarah Roy is rolling through. Sarah, welcome back to racing. Number 13, this is uh, Chesina in the yellow colours of LABTC Jublana. Yeah, well, Sarah Roy is uh, no stranger to this type of effort. And you know when you get on the start line with Mitchell and Scott, there's going to be some work to be done. So a little bit earlier than she expected. As we go back now and see the peloton there at 28 seconds, but the cars have they've pulled off. They've stopped the cars. That means so they're coming. They've stopped the cars, so as that doesn't foreshorten the gap and give them some stepping stones. So the race officials have made the call. Maybe it all comes back together again. 25 seconds, they are moving in on them, closing in. And Mitchelton Scott now are the ones that go to the front and try to up the ante. That's Sarah Roy at the head of the peloton, followed then by Jessica Roberts. Number 33 will be followed by number 35. That is the Astana team looking after their sprinter, Elena Sierra. So Mitchelton Scott now just trying to force a couple of the other teams to help out at the front. They don't want to take on too much of the responsibility. I think this is going to come back together again because there are quite a few teams in here that want to slow things down. And one of them is Tipco, the team who started it all. But unfortunately for them, Sarah Gigante was caught out in the crosswind. Back of the peloton. And look at the body language at the back of the peloton. This is Georgie Whitehouse. She looks as if she's cruising in second gear. It's number 35, Sierra. Second on the weekend at the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race. She was the winner of that race last year. She's so dangerous, Rochelle. She can win solo, as she did last year in the Cadell race, or she can win a bunch sprint finish. She has got weapons to play with. Yeah, she's certainly a dangerous rider in this type of race. Uh, she looks very comfortable too, and she has got support of her teammates around her. So she'll be feeling quite confident coming into the finish. But as we've mentioned before, she doesn't really know the strength of the likes of Ruby Rose McGannon. So she could be taken by surprise. Number 62, that's Josie Talbot. One of three members from the quarter Mentor Australian national team who have made this group. They've really backed it off. Backed it off significantly. Number 26 at the back, that's Nina Kessler from the TIPCO team. Number 91, Jamie Gunning will be disappointed that this group isn't going on with it, but she's not in a position really to be the one to drive the pace. On the left of your screen there, you've got Lauren Stevens of Team Tipco looking quite comfortable as well, one of the fastest sprinters. I think it's about to come back together again, Rochelle. Yep. This has been a big chase, and even if it does come back together, they'll pay a heavy price tomorrow. Absolutely. So Roxhold Attacker will be happy with this to get some more riders in the mix. Number 114, that's Alexandra Martin-Wallace, the winner of the first of the intermediate sprints. Incidentally, we're just two and a half kilometres away from the second intermediate sprint. I wonder if anybody will get involved in that that's hoping to win the race overall tomorrow, thinking about the small time bonuses. Mitchelton Scott on the front once again. They're sick of the passengers, so they start to up the tempo. 
Well, this is interesting because they will uh, hold a high pace now when they go through for the intermediate sprint. So it's a difficult time for the chasing peloton. They got so close, didn't quite make contact. They may have now, but as they just swing around now, we see they still haven't got contact. You're this. not on until you're on. on. Okay, so Mitchelton Scott, they will have had the communication from the team car. Perhaps just to try and break the spirit of the chasers one more time. And it can be that moment, the chase they think they're on. They let their guard down emotionally. They ease up ever so slightly. And then before they know it, the gap has blown back out again to 30 seconds. Well, I've got to say, I didn't expect Mitchell and Scott to do so much work today. They were the... You know, Team Tipco did initiate that uh, echelon, but it was uh, the Mitchell and Scott team that took over very quickly. So, I mean, they're very serious about this tour. They really want the victory, and they're having to—they're willing to work hard for it. They're not taking anything. They're not taking any chances today. This is the chasing group number 81. That's Justine Barrow. She was considered one of the dark horses to win the race overall. 23. Sarah Gigante considered a real contender, and at this rate. Both of them may well come right back into calculation as they were before the stage got started. This is stage one of the Lexus of Blackburn, Herald Sun Tour, Shepparton to Shepparton, 94 kilometres. There's 20 and a half Ks remaining. Matthew Keenan with you, joined by Commonwealth Games gold medalist Rochelle Gilmore. And Rochelle, after an early start to the stage where no breakaways really got formed, the back end of the stage has been one packed full of drama and entertaining racing. Certainly been a very tough day out there now uh, with Mitchell and Scott really putting the hammer down and you can see they're not letting up and there's only 20 kilometres to go. We're coming up to an intermediate sprint but uh, there's going to be some seriously tired legs at the end of today. Less than one kilometre to go to that intermediate sprint and I think there's a few riders towards the front here not so much concerned about the Bright Brewery points classification but more interested in the small time bonus that is on offer. Mitchelton Scott still in control. Matilda Reynolds is the rider who moves up into third place in the bluish green colours. She finished in third position in the first of the intermediate sprints. Lauren Stevens was in second position. She's in this group. The winner of that first intermediate sprint, Martin Wallace, she's back in the main peloton. The peloton now make the left hand turn and the gap is still hovering at around about the 20 second mark. The increasing of the tempo with that leading group charging towards the second of the Bright Brewery intermediate sprints could be enough to open up the gap again. Here is the sprint into Tatura and it is Mullins collecting the time bonus. Stevens in second position. Oh, Peter Mullins had missed that initial break and worked very hard to come across with Matilda Reynolds. Straight to the front, number 82, Peter Mullins of Rock Salt Attacker. And uh, she is a rider that we quite often see in the points jersey on the podiums. So uh, we may see her there again. But uh, what's going to happen now, because the break is just ahead of a chasing peloton. And the LABTC colours at the front. Let's take a look at that intermediate sprint. She doesn't miss much, Peter Mullins. She's been a winner of national titles on the dirt as a mountain biker, on the track and on the road, collecting, importantly, a three-second time bonus, plus the points in the race for the Bright Brewery points classification. And she spends a fair bit of time, incidentally, in Bright, with plenty of training camps, and she has been spotted there having pizza. Yeah, she certainly does love a really long hard ride and uh, pizza and ice cream afterwards, or McDonald's even. So uh, Peter Mullins, I mean, we, we can't count her out for uh, standing in the yellow jersey. That would be a massive result for Peter Mullins. As we said earlier, Matt, she's one of those riders that's always there around the mark, but uh, not too often on the top step. But she'll take a lot of confidence from winning that sprint because there were a few riders contesting and testing their legs in that sprint. In second position, it was Lauren Stevens from the TIPCO team. And in third place was Ruby Roseman Gannon. Just reminding us how good she is. She can win the stage today. One of the pre-race favourites. Well, they are all the names that we mentioned at the start, Matt. Uh, the only one we haven't seen actually step on the pedals is Elena Sierra. 
um, one of the big name sprinters that we which said, is smart very smart um, yeah so time bonuses are more significant at the finish line as well so they're putting all their eggs into one basket and I think they're going to be pretty hard to beat personally they've been well protected their communication's good I think confidence is high so now Lucy Kennedy she's had a relatively uh, protected race Plenty of conversation. This is the Astana team having the chat in Italian. It is uh, Ragusa who's having the chat to the other team members within that squad. They're anticipating that the other riders within the group don't understand Italian because that conversation was going right over the top of all the other riders, now communicating back to the team car. But there are a few Italians in this leading group, including the lady that you can see in the fluoro colours. This is Anna Trevisi, the Italian rider from the LABTC team. Yeah, handy little sprinter as well, Trevisi. She's one of the shortest riders in yep. the race. And uh, she'll no doubt be amongst it in the finish. Pat Shaw, we've just gone through the intermediate sprint. The chasing group had almost closed it down. All of a sudden, the leaders are back out to an advantage of 39 seconds. This could be it. Well, the politics are playing in this front group, Matthew Keenan. Uh, Mitchell and Scott are the ones that are doing all of the aggression. And that's fearing the other riders in the bunch to work. But now when they open up the road, they stop working again. And we see the pace wash off in this front group. What did it entice the gap to reopen up was they came across the road, they slowed down this front group, and then Mitchell and Scott went back to the front and put it in the gutter. The only problem is it's not coming across the shoulder enough. It's more of a crossy, more of a head cross than a cross headwind. So that percentage is slowing the bunch down and it's easy for this front group for riders to sit at the back. Well represented in this field uh, at the front is certainly the Astana team, as you mentioned before, with all riders present. Pat, I'm seeing two teams in this leading group who are actually riding as if they're hoping that the group gets caught by the chasers, and that is Rock Salt Attacker, because Justine Barrow has missed the move, and the other team, Tipco, who started it all, Sarah Gigante has missed the move, so they will also be hoping that the second group manages to claw their way back. How do you see it? I certainly agree with you for Team Tipco, but for mine, I think the biggest prospect to win tomorrow for the Rock Salt Attacker team, Emily Herfold, she's the, she's the P for this team this weekend, or this week, should I say, and she is present. She looks really good. Peter Mullins just took out the intermediate sprint. She looks like she's moving well for the stage. So maybe not such a bad situation for Roxol, but certainly for Tivka, who've been driving the brakes uh, with Mitchell and Scott. I'm a little confused with their tactics. Do you think the brake survives or it gets caught by the chasers? Well, we're starting to trickle down towards the finish now, and we might see some counter-attacks come out of this front group. I don't know if this group will survive, but the winner be present in this group. Uh, just the sheer effort to ride back on in a short period of time, I think that's going to be difficult to then recover and do the three spot to win in Shepherd today. Well, Rochelle, we've got a first at the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour. Pat Shaw has sat on the fence. He hasn't <laughs> committed either way. <laughs> We can't forget that he did make a call on uh, Ruby Roseman Gannon. It's a good one, Pat, back up there. She's got a very good chance. Uh, it's going to come down to uh, the experience of Elena Sierra. I think she's just going to have it. She looks so relaxed there. And having all of her team around her and not being isolated is a big advantage as well. Pat, number 35, yes, Sierra hasn't done anything and has not missed a beat. No, she looks fantastic too. And she's right in the draft zone. We're seeing what's really good to see, though, is the uh, representation from Jessica Pratt and Josie Talbot and also Georgia Whitehouse getting in the front of the echelon. So if there is a split, those young riders are going to make it, and that's great to see from the quarter. Looking at shoulder, we're looking at about 25 second time gap. We'll move up in the chase group. So it'll just be a matter of in the last 10 k's when the front group stays motivated or they start thinking about playing a bit of cat and mouse. Thanks, Pat. It's just breaking up on us. 15 kilometres to go. Rochelle, I think he just did the Mick Dundee. I'll tell you what the time is. Check the watch and then pretend he's looked at the sun <laughs> by saying he's looked over his shoulder and told us that it's 25 seconds. Surely he knew what the time was before he made that statement. Yeah, absolutely. But he did make some good calls. I think he had some good calls about this. Um, obviously, we don't know if the uh, chasers are going to catch, but we do know that the winner is most likely to come from this front, front group, whether they get caught or not. And, um, yeah, good call on the Quartamantha Australian team. They have been riding very, very well for a young 
national team. Well placed at the front, three riders there in the break and just staying well positioned. So hats off to them. Good ride for the day. But we get into the business end now and uh, Elena Sierra looks very comfortable. And number 16, that's Anna Trevisi in the bright fluoro colours of the LABTC team. She's slotting herself behind number 35. She wants the wheel of Alina Sierra. Yeah, she's fighting there um, with number 62, which is Josie Talbot, because she knows Trevisi that that's the wheel she needs to be on. Number one, the defending champion. This is Lucy Kennedy. She's got great team support. She's got Jessica Roberts with her. Unfortunately for Mitchelton Scott, they've started the race with four riders out of a possible six because of all the injuries that happened on Saturday at the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race. The good news is all four are world class and all four are in the front group. Yeah, look, I think they made a great decision to uh, put the hammer down and put some pressure on and uh, be on the front foot with a uh, limited number of riders. They really didn't want to get caught out. So, uh, yeah, fair play to Mitchell and Scott. Today is all about looking after themselves and Lucy for tomorrow. So, Number 21, Lauren Stevens at the back. She's been second in both of the intermediate sprints. Has that wasted energy to potentially win the stage? Yeah, look, I think it's... Um, it's, you've got to have a go, but it's disappointing if you have two goes and you second both times. It's got to uh, play on your mind a little bit that you've used that energy and you haven't been able to be the fastest unless she was doing those sprints to get a feeling without using 100%. If she finishes second on the stage, the consolation prize will be that because of her results at the intermediate sprints, she will be the leader of the points classification. Yep, well, it'll be nice for her to stand on the podium if that's what happens, but... Uh, yeah, I think, like we've seen with Elena Sierra, she hasn't uh, even attempted to go for any of those intermediate sprints, and that does uh, a couple of things. One, it does put a lot of pressure on you for the finish, but uh, secondly, you have that confidence that I've not actually had to do anything. I've had all these teammates around me, so I've got that extra little bit of kick coming into the finish. This is the chasing group, 28 seconds behind. Down at the back of the group, number 22, we see at the rear of the group, that's Erica Clevinger. She sits on the board for US Cycling. I think she's also a Gradford, uh, graduate of Stanford University. Number 23, that is Sarah Gigante, her teammate. And Clevenger needs to work in this group to give Sarah Gigante a chance at the overall classification with the big mountaintop finish to Falls Creek tomorrow. Yeah, I'd love to see some attacks coming into the finish, but the pace is just going to be too high. It's going to be very hard for a rider to jump off the front of this peloton the small bunch should i say they're moving quite fast at the moment coming into the finish 12.5 kilometers to go this is the uh, second group you can see there 25 second gap i don't think they're going to get there matt they might get close they'll certainly spend a lot of energy in the process even if they do make contact they could pay the price tomorrow 23 seconds they're slowly clawing their way back into contention. The race officials, Rochelle, they've made the decision to leave the cars out of the gap. Yeah, a good decision that, because it can make, play a very big part in uh, races coming back together. It's just, um, even though there might not be any windbreak or anything like that, just having a, a car closer in front of you gives you that feeling that you're nearly there and keeps the motivation high. So there's a lot of motorbikes in the middle there, though. They might have to quickly get out of the way if the peloton doesn't pick up if the leaders don't put a little bit of pace down now, it looks like they're coming back. This is Jessica Pratt in the white colours of the quarter men for national team now rolling through to the front. The Mitchelton Scott team, they've done a lot of the pacemaking at the front of this group, but the one rider who hasn't is Lucy Kennedy. She will be isolated on the final climb to Falls Creek tomorrow, but any time gains today on the likes of Justine Barrow and Sarah Gigante will be well worth it making the most of their more renowned sprinters in this leading group, particularly Sarah Roy, who's returning from injury. Inside the last 12 kilometres. Oh, the leading group Mitchell. left and right, making sure they stay at the front in case of any crosswinds. It looks like Lucy Kennedy's just asked for the car to come forward, which is very strange within the last 12 kilometres. You can see that hand up, so she needs some support. What that might be, I don't know if that's Jess Roberts maybe or Lucy Kennedy, but there might be a mechanic, or that would be a very unfortunate time. Well, let's, let's hope that that is not the case. A little communication going on there. I don't think it is, or we would see uh, 
Gracie Elvin dropped back there, but there might be a stop on the left-hand side of the road. Let's keep an eye on that. That's uh, Mitchelton Scott, Lucy Kennedy with a hand in the air, just looking for some support. It should be neutral service vehicle to provide support for this group. There's certainly no panic from the Mitchelton Scott team. So fingers crossed that there is no mechanical problem for Lucy Kennedy, the defending champion. They've still got riders rolling through to the front, so that indicates that all is okay with Lucy Kennedy. There might be a story to be told at the end of the day. Jessica Pratt in the white colours for the Quarter Mentha real estate team. I think she'll go pretty well tomorrow. I don't think Jessica can win this race overall, but she can finish somewhere between 5th and 10th. She's got a huge future ahead of her. Jessica Pratt, she will be in Europe racing for Canyon Tram. And now we see Mitchell and Scott moving towards the front. The gap is really starting to close down. This is the LABTC team coming through to the front. They have all three of their riders remaining in the race in this front group. Emily Herfoss once again from Rock Salt, attacker rolling through. And look at all the motorbikes coming through. It's a bike race, but there's more vehicles on the race than there are cyclists. Yeah, well, the uh, chasing group is very close behind now. So we see that time gap on the screen's actually gone, disappeared because they are so close with 10 kilometres to the finish. 10 k's to go. They're about to make the left-hand turn into Marupna. Another change in wind direction. Well, they change direction. The wind stays the same way, but its impact on the race changes ever so slightly. It's coming from their right-hand side at the moment. And just the slightest bit of tailwind will up the morale from this leading group and increase their chances of holding off that chasing group inside the last 10 k's. Sarah Roy at the front. What a great return this is after a few months out with injury. Good to see her back at the head of the race. Yeah, an absolute class bike rider. Such a valuable domestique, Sarah Roy. She has so much experience with just sitting on the front. She can go for so long. So a very valuable and reliable teammate to have. As Sarah Roy's been given the job to keep the pace high here just to prevent breakaways and uh, try and keep that front bunch away from the chasers because they want those time gaps they want less people to worry about tomorrow for Lucy Kennedy and she just swings off to the side she'll have a bit of a stretch and no doubt be pulling some more turns before the finish and the ideal scenario for that team would be that they don't win the stage today and somebody else has to do a little bit of the controlling early tomorrow and they just have to worry about getting Lucy Kennedy to the last 15 kilometers of the climb up Falls Creek and then hope that she can repeat her climbing of one year ago. The Astana team now prepared to do some of the pacemaking at the front. They want to eliminate a few of the sprinters in that second group to increase the odds of Alina Sierra to collect the victory. Yeah, I think they'll also be wanting to just keep the pace high enough that uh, riders that they don't know too much about don't just chip off the front there because there is some strong riders that haven't been racing in Europe in this front group so they're just trying to keep the pace high enough that there's not attacks going and they can keep things in control. I'm not sure that 28 no, seconds is correct. It looks a bit closer doesn't it? It can always be foreshortened with the mm. camera lens but the great thing about it being foreshortened with the camera lens is it moves us to the edge of our seat. <laughs> so the LA team now also there on the front. This is uh, definitely a lot closer than 29 seconds. Yeah, this is Bogard at the front for the LA team. Now the specialised team also rolling through. They're hoping that Matilda Reynolds can collect the stage victory. She did sound quite confident that she's in with a chance before the start in that pre-race interview. So Matilda Reynolds, one to watch out coming into the finish for the specialised women's racing team. In contrast to that, one of the things that a few people have spoken to her about is having more confidence, actually believing that you belong. Well, the first step might be just saying, you know, I have a chance here. Fake it till you make <laughs> yeah, it. Fake it till you make it. So talk yourself into believing that you can win. And she can win. She was third on the opening stage at the Santos Tour Down Under. And she was third behind Chloe Hosking and Lotta Hentala, two of the best sprinters in the world. She she's can got definitely every, win. Every reason to be confident coming in. She's got as much chance as other sprinters in this front group. 
seven and a half kilometres remaining. A bit of the impetus has gone out of the front group, but the chasing is still on from the chasing group, from that second peloton. Right. Here it is. This is the group that contains the Australian time trial champion, Sarah Gigante. Plenty of New Zealanders from their national team in that group, and they're prepared to work. Getting very close. 7.2 kilometres. It's, uh, they've done it a little bit the hard way, actually, coming back. They've just been hovering around that 30-second mark for so long. And uh, now the pace is going to get even higher in the front as they start to do lead-outs and try to stay out of trouble. It the, will naturally increase the pace. The Kiwis are working predominantly for number 75. That is Samara Shepherd who's rolling through. She's a fantastic mountain biker and she's an outstanding climber. And they've got high hopes for her with the mountaintop finish tomorrow. The bright yellow bike, 111, that's Sophie Edwards from Pro Racing Sunshine Coast. Well, they don't need to chase this group because they have Ruby Roseman Gannon at the front of the peloton. Yeah, by the time they get there, they may not be able to do much to help Ruby Rose McGannon, but I'd love to see a shot of uh, Ruby in the front group there and see how she looks coming into the finish because she is one of the big favourites and she's Pat's favourite. So Ruby Rose McGannon, if we get a shot of her, she's in Pro Racing Sunshine Coast team. Black helmet on, right-hand side of the screen, sitting in about seventh position. She Near looks the front, but not on the front. Looks comfortable, looks confident. She's in a good position. She knows the wheels that she's sitting on. And she's had a lot of sprinting experience this summer. So she is looking very comfortable just to the right of your screen. Black helmet. She grew up racing on the track out at the Brunswick Velodrome. Spent a fair bit of her junior time racing against Sarah Gigante and Luke Plapp. Those three grew up together, and you are the company you keep. The benchmark was set high, and all three of them are of an international standard. That chasing group, Michelle, they are almost back on. Well, I didn't predict that would happen so close to the finish. That's, uh... This is the back of the chasing group. Number 95, that's Ella Bloor from Specialised Women's Racing. That's a team with three riders in the front group. They have Jamie Gunning, Taryn Heather and Matilda Reynolds in the leading group of 23. Just 12 seconds. That is all that the gap that they need to close. The Kiwi national team, they really want to try and reel that gap back in because they're working for Samara Shepherd in the hope that she can get the job done tomorrow. 5.6 kilometres and 12 seconds and they're not going to give up because they need to get every second closer they possibly can and it's Mitchell and Scott now really applying some pressure. It's going to be very hard for that chasing group to make contact while Mitchell and Scott are putting the hammer down there at the front. How hard is it for them though to maintain this in terms of their morale when they've got so many passengers within this group? I'm not sure it's going to be too much of a concern given that they're not that interested in today's stage. They just want to get to the finish out of trouble. They want to keep as many riders out of contention, the ones that are behind in the chasing group. I think it's just now about swapping off turns, keeping pressure on the pedals and trying to maintain that gap to give Lucy Kennedy less riders to worry about on that climb up to Falls Creek tomorrow. One of the biggest teams in the world, Mitchelton Scott at the front on stage one of the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour. 95 kilometres worth of racing, they're down to the final five. The leaders have an advantage of 17 seconds and the defending champion, Lucy Kennedy, she finds herself in this front group with her entire team around her for support. Pre-stage favourites, Ruby Rose Ben Gannon from the Pro Racing Sunshine Coast team and Astana's Alina Sierra are also in that front group. Pat Shaw wants to join the conversation. He's just sent a text message saying they won't be caught. <laughs> He's off the fence. He's committed to the lead group surviving. Yeah, I mean, they shouldn't be caught. That's what, you know, we're so close to the finish with 4.4 kilometres to go. Normally the pace would be so high that the uh, chasing group shouldn't be able to make ground on them now. And you can see 19 seconds now it's going out. So this is where the winner of today's stage is going to come from for the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour, stage one, racing into Shepparton, Victoria. And it's all Mitchelton Scott at the front. The rest of the race, they're looking to that team to do the pace making. It's back out to 21 seconds. Dare I say it, it's going to hurt. Pat Shaw is right. <laughs> yes, he's right. Definitely, uh, I think this is... Uh, this is where the race is at now, and there shouldn't be too much lull of the pace. Riders want to keep the pace high, 
make sure they stay safe coming into the finish with 3.9 kilometres to go. We are really at the business end of the bike race now. You'll see the Starner team getting together. We've got Ruby Roseman Gannon all by herself to see what she can do. She's a strong, powerful rider. She's got the speed. Has she got the experience to be in the right place at the right time to pull off the victory of her lifetime on the road? Emily Herfoss sitting in second position. And if Ruse, Ruby Roseman Gannon does win, it won't be a surprise. It will be a confirmation. She's had a fantastic start to the season. And Emily Herfoss, um, she should be uh, up for the most aggressive rider of the day's award, that's for sure, for the uh, Rock Salt attacker team. She has not missed a beat all day. She's been in the right position and uh, not scared to get amongst the action with Mitchell and Scott at the front. This is a fantastic return to racing for Sarah Roy. If there were any doubts about her rehab, they have just been put to rest. Herfoss stepping out of the way, not to interrupt the Mitchelton Scott train. That's a good move. I'm not sure what she can do in the lead out to support Peter Mullins. But she's not slow in her own right, Emily Herfoss. No, she's quite quick, actually. And it'll be interesting because a combination of Peter Mullins actually leading out Emily Herfoss could also be good as well. Peter's got a long sprint. She's got uh, a lot of power and strength so now we see in full flight Mitchell and Scott with the Astana team tucked in behind you can see Elena Sierra just fighting for a teammate's wheel there establishing her ground with 2.8 kilometers to go she's got plenty of riders left in front of her her team will be in trouble if Mitchell and Scott swing off but they're going to ride it to the line while Lucy Kennedy's just staying in contact at the back there it's all Sarah Roy at the front followed then by Jessica Roberts and Gracie Elvin Elvin takes a little look over the shoulder, just making okay. sure that Lucy Kennedy is well protected. Their advantage, it's building back out to 20 seconds. Two and a half kilometres remaining. Stage one of the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour. Don't count uh, J Jessica Roberts either. She has dominated on the UK scene in sprinting. She's quite handy herself. She's had to do a bit more work than the likes of Elena Sierra, who just takes a sip from a bottle inside the last 2.5 kilometres. Very relaxed. The white colours, you see with the white arm warmers, they're more sun protection today. That is Alina Sierra. Yeah, just took a drink from a bottle with 2.4 kilometres to go, so she's very comfortable. It's a sign that you're well within yourself physically if you're able to take a drink or a bite to eat. There's one corner remaining, Rochelle, and it's a right-hand turn as they sweep through to the finish line in the final 400 metres. Look, if Gracie Alvin can take over from uh, Sarah Roy, I think Jessica Roberts is also in a very good position to have a go at this sprint. They just don't want to be left too early without riders, but uh, Elena Sierra is a punchy rider, so her kick is going to be pretty fierce. And where is Ruby Roseman Gannon? This is the chasing group. They're at 24 seconds behind. They continue to concede ground. Number 71, that's Ella Harris from New Zealand. They're inside the last two kilometres. This is now a case no longer of trying to chase the leaders who we're back on board with, but simply limit the damage. Lucy Kennedy has gone to the back just to avoid trouble. She doesn't want to touch wheels with the sprinters. She'll be very concentrated, using a lot of mental focus just to, you know, look forward in that group, make sure, you know, if there's overlapping wheels and stuff, I can react quickly to it and uh, stay out of trouble. So 1.4 kilometres to go, and it's still Sarah Roy really starting to feel it now. I can't imagine she'd be able to go too much further, but Gracie Elvin right there with Jessica Roberts on the wheel and Astana looking very comfortable there with Elena Sierra tucked in ready to unleash her powerful sprint. It's Sierra in the white colours, the Cuban national champion. Matilda Reynolds has squeezed in through the middle and she is at the back of the Mitchelton Scott train. She's fighting for the wheel of Jessica Roberts, the one kilometre marker. They are almost into Shepparton. Astana now taking over, organising the lead out for Alina Sierra. Going out the back door, that was Sarah Roy. Her job is done. Peter Mullins has worked her way up towards the front. This is the battle for the final corner. Bogard has slipped backwards. The pace is really picking up. It's Astana now driving the pace for Sierra. Gracie Alvin's still got Jessica Roberts on the wheel there. Elena Sierra in very good position as one of her teammates just swing off. Is it too early? As you said, Matt, it's an easy sprint to go too early on. You need to be a little bit patient. 
while they sprint fiercely for this corner. This is the final corner. It's Gracie Elvin who leads them through. Elena Sierra is just waiting. The black helmet, that's Ruby Roseman Gannon. She breaks first. It's Roberts who leads. And then Ruby Roseman Gannon, she's about to open up. But it's Elena Sierra, the Colombian. She collects. Sierra wins. With it comes yellow. She stands on top. Well, she made that look quite textbook. Very relaxed coming into the finish, Elena Sierra. She has got fine form in Australia. Second at Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race. And I think a, a pretty comfortable victory for Elena Sierra. She was pushed to the line, but I think she was in control with a very strong team as well. Once again, Ruby Roseman Gannon, there or thereabouts, but not quite able to get the stage victory. And it looked like it was Anna Travisi from the LA team who was also up amongst it. And they're just congratulating each other at the moment. They're pretty happy with the situation. Importantly, the clock continues to tick as we await the arrival of the second group that contains... Sarah Gigante, one of the pre-race favourites. They've just gone across the finish line. That was roughly 25 seconds. They're not out of it. I tell you what, Matt, that turned out to be a very fierce stage. I think there's going to be some very tired legs tonight. A hard, you know, well-fought stage. I think Mitchell and Scott rode a fantastic race. Let's take a look at that sprint finish once again. It was a real fight for that final corner. The white colours of Alina Sierra. It's Trevisi in the fluoro colours of the LA team. Ruby Roseman Gannon poking through the middle as well. Trevisi, I think it was Trevisi in second spot. Ruby Roseman Gannon in third. Timing was everything. Ruby Roseman Gannon looked to be finishing quicker than Alina Sierra, but the finish line... Is that the finish line? <laughs> that's right. So that's where I said a little bit. I mean, R Ruby Roseman Gannon, she has um, the power and speed for sure, but the experience of Elena Sierra to say, stay so relaxed and use the energy at the right time, I think it was uh, experience that got there there and the strength of her teammate, just knowing teammates, knowing where to put her in the right place. LA, they have all the experience as well after many years of sprinting together. But uh, Elena Sierra, the Cuban rider, takes the victory for the first stage of the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour here in Shepparton. And with it will come the yellow jersey. The pre-stage favourite has collected the win. The defending champion, Lucy Kennedy, she stayed in the group. We'll analyse it all after this. that threat of fire and we're well aware of it. This summer we've had horrific bushfires and having people come back and it'll be good to see the trails getting filled up and the roads getting filled up with cyclists again. You and I have had fortune ride all over the world and this matches anything I've done. Couldn't agree more. I mean, we're so spoilt with the vineyards, the mountain views, it's just magic. So the ride that we've done today, that's a road ride that I know pretty well. But you're famous for being a world champion on the mountain bike. You've got to take me off road. Yes, we've got Mystic Mountain Bike Park here and then six other amazing locations. This is one of my favourite destinations. I'm coming back in Easter. Hopefully lots of other people come back as well and support the locals. Cheers, mate. And the race will be heading to the high country tomorrow for the second and final stage of the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour. And it is a brutal stage that starts at the top of Falls Creek. They descend to the bottom into Mount Beauty. And they turn around and they go straight back up again. Not one for the sprinters, but Alina Sierra, who won the stage today, I'm not discounting the prospects of her challenging tomorrow. I think she'll have a good, good go at it. I mean, she'll be very comfortable on the descents and... Uh that's going to play a big part as well. I think the descent at the start, 30 kilometres downhill, a little bit of a pinch in there towards the end, but I think that's going to play a big part in the stage as well. Just the nervous energy that some of the climbers and GC riders will have to use to stay in contention. Uh, there'll be a fair price to be paid for the effort that was expended today, and the one thing that Sierra didn't do was waste a single calorie today. She stayed in the slipstream all day long, 
didn't participate in the intermediate sprints, she was smart. Yeah, she was very smart. I think the confidence that she had in her team was brilliant as well. She had them all there in the right. When that uh, echelon went and went into the gutter, the team stayed very relaxed. They all got themselves into the moves, so they never panicked, and I think you're right. They've, they've really looked after themselves today, so I think they've got a good chance to do something tomorrow as well. Let's have a look at how well she did it with the highlights from this opening stage. One. 75 riders took to the start line for the opening stage One of the Lexus of Blackburn Dwayne Herald Sun Tour. 94 kilometres starting and finishing in Shepparton. Took a little while for the flag to come in to end the neutral zone. It extended slightly longer than normal because of a mechanical problem for one of the riders. There was a few riders on the start line that their health was under a question mark because of being involved in the crash on Saturday at the Deakin University Kid 11's Great Ocean Road Race. One of them, Mena Farm, the Thailand national champion, she was out. In the process of swinging right, she almost took Holly Harris with her. At the first of the intermediate sprints, it was Alexandra Martin-Wallace who collected maximum points ahead of Lauren Stevens. It was then Matilda Reynolds in third Lawrence, spot. We then moved on to one of the open planes and in the crosswind it was Tipco Rochelle who really started the stage and they split the peloton to pieces. Yeah, they certainly did. They put the hammer down and they worked really hard. They all committed 100%. They put it into the gutter. We didn't really expect that to happen because there's not so much wind, but uh, they really did commit to it. And then once Mitchell and Scott got involved and helped them out there, it was all over for the chasers. So Lucy Kennedy, she had a relatively uh, safe ride. Be interesting to see if uh, there was any time gaps in the finish, but she would have had to work pretty hard to stay at the same time as the uh, winner. Through the second of the intermediate sprints, it was Peter Mullins who went there first. At Lawrence Stevens, yet again, was in second position. At one kilometre to go, there was no chance of the chasing group returning. And it wasn't until this point that the Astana team took over at the front. They'd saved their energy. Sarah Roy, her job was done for Mitchelton Scott, making sure that Lucy Kennedy had some time gains on a few of her rivals. And then this battle for the final corner and position was everything. Well, we see there Lucy Kennedy was just off the back, so she might have lost a few seconds to the sprinters coming into the finish. But now we see when they opened up, we saw Ruby Rose Mingannon just hit out a little bit too early. And then Elena Sierra came through with Trevisi from LA. They're very disappointed with not. And she had time to get the arms up. It was Alina Sierra taking the victory in second position. It was Anna Trevisi from the LA team. And in third place, so consistent this season, Ruby Rose Ben Gannon. We've spoken about her a lot for good reason. She's been in the results a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Like we said today. So here's a rundown of your results. Nina Kessler was then in fourth position. It was Jessica Roberts in fifth place. Jamie Gunning, a good start for her in sixth position. It was then Ahumada in seventh, followed by Josie Talbot. Peter Mullins in ninth and Matilda Reynolds in tenth. I get the impression, Rochelle, that those two, Mullins and Reynolds, they paid the price for the chase to join that group. They were the last two to make contact. Absolutely, 100%. I think the effort that they had to do to get across to uh, that front group uh, has cost them dearly in the end. And Peter Mullins obviously trying to look after Reynolds as well. So I think they would have liked a, a better result. They were a very strong team, the Rock Salt Attacker team of Peter Mullins. Um, good day. And in terms of the general classification, because of the time bonuses, Alina Sierra now leads by four seconds ahead of Anna Trevisi. It's six seconds then to Ruby Roseman Gannon, as it is also to Lauren Stevens, who picked up time bonuses at the intermediate sprints. Peter Mullins is in fifth place at seven seconds behind, followed then by Matilda Reynolds and Anastasia Chesina are both at nine seconds behind. It's then Kessler, Roberts and Gunning. Jamie Gunning could be the wild card tomorrow up Falls Creek. She can climb. Yeah, we've got a race on our hands tomorrow, that's for sure. So we're waiting to see Lucy Kennedy's time gap on the general classification. Well, David McKenzie has been with us throughout the men's race. He's been watching closely throughout the women's race. He's scurried away down to interview one of the big protagonists on today's stage. Here he is, David McKenzie. Alenis. Complimenti, oh, troppo velocità. Eh, grazie, credo che fu una buona labor del equipo. Eh, le doy gracias a ella por haber confiado en mí y eh, alistarnos para la carrera de mañana, que sé que es una carrera dura, pero bueno, nunca hay nada imposible. 
So uh, it was a, a very good job uh, of our team. We were only four, but it, it was a very good job uh, in all the race. And uh, this is a good result because tomorrow is a race more harder. So the first is done. What about the, the crosswinds today, the wind? Did you expect it to split? Um, ti aspettavi che facessero il vento? Eh, che facessero il ventaglio, te, te lo aspettavi oppure pensavi che si arrivasse tranquilli fino all'arrivo? Eh, bueno, pensavo che si iba a ser viento, però non si sapeva che, che velocità di vento iba a ser, así che quando si partì il gruppo già era un gruppo più corto, era un po' más, meno complicato per le sprint, perché quando hai più atleta è un po' più difficile di stare adelante. Uh, so we didn't know how was the speed of the wind, so um, it was just a little bit of surprise, uh, but uh, it was better because uh, we arrived uh, to the sprint uh, in a small group, less than uh, the, the old group that we are, we were a very small group in general. And now, tomorrow, yellow jersey, I think, I think so. Do you defend? How do you defend? Se domani difendiamo la mano. Sì, claro, se, aunque sea una etapa un poco difícil, eh, que hay escaladoras buenas, eh, hay que defenderlo igual. So, uh, yes, tomorrow is uh, another race uh, than today, but uh, we try uh, to dead to, to defend our jersey. Ok, grazie, complimenti. Grazie. I'm looking forward to seeing what she can do on the climb because we speak of her as a sprinter, but on the weekend at the Kid Elevens Great Ocean Road Race, sure, Chalamba Crescent is really short. It's a kilometre climb. But she went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Amanda Spratt. Yeah, no, I think she has a... She's a sprinter who can climb, so um, quite often they don't choose to because they're saving themselves for a sprint stage, but there's no reason why not to have a real go tomorrow, so it'll be interesting to see what she's capable of. Let's take a look at the sprints throughout today's stage. The first of the intermediate sprints, and this was after some 18.6 kilometres having been covered, and it was Alexandra Martin-Wallace from the Pro Racing Sunshine Coast team who picked up the maximum points. Lauren Stevens from TIPCO was second. Matilda Reynolds of Specialised Women's Racing was in third place. The second of the intermediate sprints, that went to Peter Mullins from Rock Salt Attacker. Stevens, Lauren Stevens was in second place once again. In third position was Ruby Roseman Gannon. But the one that mattered the most was the one on the finish line in Shepparton. Charging for that final corner, Gracie Elvin was doing all she could to try and support Jessica Roberts, the new recruit across to Mitchelton Scott. But the patient game was played all day long by Alina Sierra. As soon as she saw the finish line, she opened up the pipes and she took the win ahead of Anna Trevisi with Ruby Roseman Gannon in third position. Ruby Roseman Gannon, she paid a heavy price for not having any teammates, but on the flip side, what a learning experience for her. Absolutely, I think she will take a lot from this finish and the confidence should just grow because she's uh, rubbing elbows with the best and she did, she knows there's some things that she could do different. One is have teammates, one is know which wheel to follow and maybe go a little bit later in the sprint. So there's a lot of things that she could change for a sprint and uh, she's right there, she's got the power. Let's have a look at the course for tomorrow. It's a big one to Falls Creek. The stage starts at the top of Falls Creek. They then descend down Falls Creek. It's around about 20 kilometres of descending, a little bit of a climb, more descending, slight climb, more descending. Then into Mount Beauty, where they do a little loop around Mount Beauty to make the U-turn and then come back up and through into Falls Creek. That little road that takes you back through to Wonga South and so on, through the tree yards out the back there it is absolutely stunning and then the climb itself the last 20 kilometers is pretty much all uphill there's no respite Rochelle this is going to be a tough stage there'll be no lucky winner of the race yeah look at that it looks like a skateboard ramp that pretty much tells the story it's a tough one yeah, as we said, a very tough stage tomorrow. We thought it would nullify today's stage, but it was an exciting and a very hard stage, so a lot of riders will be trying to get as much recovery as possible in the ice baths and yeah, get ready for tomorrow's stage. Cooling the core body temperature down will be really important because it has been a hot day. This is our stage winner, Alina Sierra, stepping out to collect. 
as she managed to pick up some goodies from the chocolate Watch factory nearby. Alenis, congratulations. She'll win some friends if she has. Arms in the air. She's following instructions <laughs> from David McKenzie. All smiles on the podium. It's a position that she's used to. She has tasted plenty of success internationally. And this looks like it is the most combative prize, which is going to Nina Kessler of the TIBCO team. Well, that was the team that caused the split at the back end of the stage. It was the defining moment of the stage. Nina Kessler, ladies and gentlemen, she will wear the red jersey tomorrow as the Quest Shepparton most aggressive the team rode really well. They took the race on. The one disappointment for the team is the fact that Sarah Gigante, she was there, and she missed the split. Yeah, I think, like Pat said, it was a bit confusing as to why they were pushing so hard in that moment without their lead rider there for tomorrow. But um, they certainly were the riders that made the race aggressive and made it, you know, all happen. So they committed 100% to putting it in the gutter and splitting it up. So a well-deserved jersey. She can still win. She's still within 30 seconds of the uh, yellow jersey. This is Jessica Roberts now stepping up to collect the Visit Victoria white jersey as the best young rider. Just missed out on a top three finish on the stage, but a very good start for her with her new team. Yeah, she's got a huge future ahead of her, still very young, so um, a great recruitment for Mitchelton Scott and uh, a great start. And I think she'll be very pleased with that, so... She'll have a work cut out tomorrow. I don't think she'll be in the white jersey at the end of tomorrow's stage. No, I agree. Um, it's going to be difficult. She's definitely not a, a climber, so she'll enjoy that jersey tonight and hand it over after tomorrow's stage. Plus tomorrow, she'll be working for Lucy Kennedy, who is well-placed to win this title for a second year. Yeah, it's going to be a hard job for the riders of Mitchell and Scott. Only three of them there to support Lucy Kennedy, but they'll give everything that they've got. The most dangerous part for Lucy tomorrow is the descent. Yeah, it's going to be difficult and I think they need to all stay around her on the descent in case there is a, a chase to do at the bottom before they start climbing again. So, um, and I, I feel that Lucy Kennedy might be quite nervous about starting on a 30 kilometre descent. So yeah, there'll be some work to do there. And there'll be a few extra clothes worn potentially at the start, although it does start sort of around midday, so it might not be super cold, but last night at Falls Creek it was 2 degrees. This is the green jersey for the Bright Brewery points classification, and it's the stage winner, Alina Sierra, who Once leads. Once again, put your hands together. In fact, it's a 2.30 start in the afternoon tomorrow, so the temperatures won't be a problem at all at the start up in Falls Creek. By this time in the afternoon, it'll be high teens, low 20s. Beautiful day. Well, Alina Sierra, she won't get to wear that green jersey tomorrow for the Bright Brewery, but... It will be on the shoulders of Anna Travisi, who was second on the stage, because Alina Sierra will be wearing the yellow jersey as the overall race leader for the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour. And she's about to step out on the podium now to collect that jersey. It's been a successful day for her and the Astana team. Will they ride in defence of the jersey tomorrow or watch the Mitchelton Scott team as the pre-race favourites? Yeah, I don't think they... I mean, they're going to fight as much as they can to hold on to this yellow jersey. I think it's a big, tough ass. They know that, but they they want to uh, do everything that they can to try and hold on to it. But I think Mitchell and Scott will be the the team that needs to take most of the responsibility tomorrow, given that they have one of the standout favourites. Congratulations. Step forward for the cameras, Alenis. She was easy to spot today in the colours as the Cuban national champion. Tomorrow she'll be even easier to pick out in the peloton because she'll be wearing the yellow jersey as the leader of the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour. A two-stage race, just getting the all clear to make sure it's time to spray the Mitchelton champagne. And the answer is yes. She's got plenty of experience. There you go, your leader with a day to go. Alenis. She's been enjoying her trips to Australia. Last year, the winner of the uh, Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race, and she was in second position on Saturday. Rochelle, thanks for joining us today. Plenty of action still to come tomorrow. It's Alina Sierra who's in the yellow jersey. Falls Creek to come. Join us tomorrow for more from the Lexus of Blackburn Herald Sun Tour.